We'll start again, yeah. I thought it was on the first time. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, third meeting of the year, uh, Administration Fire Finance Committee meeting. I'm your chair, Jason Trombetta. Uh, please note that all comments for the public on this matter, the agenda may be provided in person by attending the meeting or advising the chair during the request an item on the agenda. Uh, for those individuals who are unable to attend the meeting in person, you may submit your comments for the matters of the agenda by either emailing jshimi at westlincoln.ca before 4.30 on the day of the meeting. Comments submitted will be considered the public information and read into the public record or to by contacting the clerk's department on Zoom link to attend the meeting virtually. This meeting is live streamed. The link to watch the meeting live can be found on the township's website by selecting township office tab at the top of your website, then clicking the council and standing committee meetings tab scroll down the meeting list find the link the meeting will be recorded and available for viewing within the next 48 hours so we have a land acknowledgement statement uh, the township of West Lincoln being part of the Niagara region is situated on treaty land this land is steeped in the rich history of the First Nations such as the Hattawendoronk the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation there are many First Nations Métis and Inuit people from across Turtle Island that live and work in Niagara region today the township of West Lincoln as a part of the regional municipality of Niagara stands with all indigenous people past and present in promoting the wise stewardship of the land in which we live Members of committee, is there any change in orders of items on the agenda? Seeing none. Members of committee, is there any disclosure of peculiar interest or conflict of interest? Seeing none. So we have an appointment this evening. Uh, item A2323, Staff Sergeant Chris Lemach. Lemach? Lemach. That was actually easier than all the first two that I had. Chris Lemach, a Grimsby detachment. Uh, an introduction to local staff sergeant and an overview of police services in Ni Niagara and West Lincoln. So you have a PowerPoint presentation. So I'd just like you to come to the uh, presenter section and just uh, state your name and, I guess, address of the department for the record, I guess. Uh, is that what you need, Joe? Name and, yeah. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Christopher Lemich, L-E-M-A-I-C-H, and business address is 45 Clark Street in Grimsby. Thank you. And through your worship and Mr. Chair, uh, to members of council, staff, and uh, members of the community, I'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight and share some information that I do have uh, as said, I am a staff sergeant with the Niagara Regional Police Service, and I'm the district commander for 8th District. That encompasses Grimsby, West Lincoln, and Lincoln. I welcome the opportunity to connect with councillors, members of staff, and the community uh, to hear directly about important issues that may impact our community, and while also being able to share information regarding enforcement efforts that do take place in the community to address community concerns. Quite simply, our mission statement for the Niagara Regional Police Service. The Niagara Regional Police Service is dedicated to serving and protecting residents and visitors within the regional municipality of Niagara. In partnership with the community, we shall provide quality policing services with integrity, diligence, and sensitivity. Uh, as you're aware, the senior command structure of the Niagara Regional Police Service consists of our Chief of Police, Brian McCullough, supported by two deputies, Deputy Chief of Police for Operational Services, Brett Flynn, and, and Deputy Chief of Police for Support Services, Bill Forty. The following is our org chart. Uh, it shows the scope of services and the areas of expertise within the Niagara Regional Police Service. Uh, more importantly, from a uniform perspective, we have 764 sworn members as part of our author authorized strength. Uh, that includes the Chief of Police, two deputies, five superintendents, 14 inspectors, 30 staff sergeants, 105 sergeants, and 607 constables. 
On our professional side, we have 336 civilian members consisting of one director, 15 managers, and 315 uh, civilian support staff. Uh, taking the organizational chart and breaking it down a little further, uh, here's a snapshot of various police programs uh, that we have here in Niagara from Executive Services, uh, District Operations that encompasses our frontline policing efforts, as well as operational port support services. Investigative services are resources over and above uh, beyond the officers that are assigned to frontline patrol. They include officers assigned to special victims unit, domestic violence, child abuse, as well as our emergency services group, which includes uh, the emergency tactical unit, canine, and traffic enforcement. Uh, as you were, most members of the community only uh, get to experience or get exposure to frontline uniform policing. Uh, driving within the community, answering various calls for service uh, that uh, officers encounter. But any time these specialty units are available and can be deployed to assist where appropriate for that tailored response. Further, we also have our corporate services, technology services and operational support. This includes our 911 and communications center the Real-Time Operations Center, and court services. Uh, to kind of give a little bit of a demonstration how these units can all work together uh, within our region for a call for service, I'll use an example of a robbery with a firearm call. The initial information would be received by members of our communications unit where the call for service would start, where at that time, uh, frontline police response would be dispatched and depending on the location of the robbery, additional resources uh, could be uh, utilized, including our emergency response unit, canine, and emergency task unit. Additional resources may be required from items such as forensic services, even our traffic enforcement unit to assist with establishing a perimeter for a canine search. District detectives or specialty detectives could also be notified to investigate, conduct interviews, take a statement and conduct both a uh, person canvas and as well canvas for video that's becoming very important as technology improves. Again, we could also utilize our forensic services unit to uh, gather and process any trace evidence. Uh, when an arrest is made, our person will be taken to the central holding unit, processed by police officers and special constables. Uh, there's quite a bit going on uh, in areas of policing behind the scenes that are may not necessarily be uh, evident or uh, on the front line of policing, uh, but we all play an important role, uh, even including our mechanics at fleet who help keep our cruisers running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Calls for service region wide. Uh, although there is an X there, I really did do the math and it's a 0.3% increase uh, from 2021 to uh, 2022. More specifically for West Lincoln calls for service, there was a 3.8% increase in calls for service from 2021 to 2022, which isn't a uh, large amount, but calls for service are statistically trending upward. Uh, <coughs> officers assigned to 8th District are responsible for a very large geographic portion of our region. Uh, they're responsible for patrolling 33.4% of Niagara region's total square kilometer land space. And the township of West Lincoln is about 387 square kilometers. I was asked to provide some statistics on, I guess, what uh, could be local crime issues or crime trends with respect to West Lincoln and West Lincoln only. Uh, on the graph, it represents break and enters theft of motor vehicles, and theft from a motor vehicle. I'll point out that theft from a motor vehicle is trending uh, downward, which I think is great to see, and I can will expand on that further. Uh, theft of motor vehicle is also trending downward, and brake and enters uh, increased slightly from year to year. Speed enforcement. Uh, 481 provincial offense notices were issued in 2022 related to speed violations. That is in the community of West Lincoln alone. 
That doesn't count Grimsby, that doesn't count Lincoln. That's not a region-wide number, and those are specific speed enforcement uh, provincial offense notices. It doesn't count careless driving at accident scenes, follow too close or turn not in safety. It's just strictly speed enforcement. Uh, so far, year to date, and this was as of April 11th, we're at 103 provincial offense notices for speeding in West Lincoln. And if we can extrapolate or carry that data forward, uh, we should uh, see the same enforcement numbers in 2022 or 2023, rather that we saw in 2022. Uh, something else that's assisting is a speed enforcement project called Project Speed Alert. That's being uh, spearheaded by our traffic enforcement unit and it's essentially proactive speed enforcement on rural roads. Uh, Rest Lincoln uh, is a predominantly rural area for the most part, so we should see our traffic enforcement people out in these rural areas. As well as collaborative partnership with Niagara Region for Vision Zero, uh, which makes an effort to eliminate uh, traffic fatalities across the region. I will note that since 2020, there has been nine fatal collisions in the uh, municipality and no fatal collision so far this year in 2023. There's also uh, community safety zones within the municipality uh, that we must protect our most vulnerable of our community at John Calvin School and Smithville District Christian High School. Uh, recently, the Niagara Region uh, brought forward a, a community hotline where members could call and report traffic safety concerns, and that number is 289-248-1060. And that number is managed or looked after by members of our central traffic unit, and they have a core responsibility for traffic enforcement throughout the region. So if anyone does have a traffic concern, in addition to reaching out to me, uh, please feel free to call that region-wide traffic enforcement number. Excuse me, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Lemich, if you can just repeat that number while some members of council might want to write that down. Just By all means, it's area code 289-248-1060. Thank you. Good, Mr. Chair? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. No, not at all. Uh, there are several community engagement efforts that officers here in 8th District uh, make. Again, we often... Uh, take part in the Lock It or Lose It campaign. Uh, bottom right photo illustrates that an officer putting a Lock It or Lose It campaign uh, small placard underneath a windshield wiper for a vehicle that's obviously left wide open and insecure. Uh, it's inviting people maybe to uh, take a look at what's inside that vehicle. As well, we often conduct targeted speed enforcement and as well I know uh, Large overweight vehicles were a concern uh, in this community as well as Lincoln with respect to uh, heavy trucks bypassing the Lincoln scales. And we've conducted uh, four heavy truck enforcement blitzes. Uh, we did two already in the month of March, and we have another five scheduled throughout the year. Uh, we work in collaboration with the Ministry of Transportation Ontario uh, we've also had our policing partners from Hamilton, Halton, uh, the Ontario Provincial Police, and the Niagara Parks Police come out and assist us with that important initiative as well. And I'd be happy to take any questions uh, anyone may have uh, yeah. that I can be of assistance. I'd first, I'd like to say thank you for this presentation, uh, Staff Sergeant Lee Mitch. Uh, I particularly like that, uh, you know, last term of council, it wasn't so much focus on West Lincoln. I really appreciate that this you came with a lot of statistics for municipality of West Lincoln, so that's really, really helpful. So I will turn it to members of committee if they have any questions. So I have, quite sure probably everybody probably have a question, but I saw Councillor Bradrick's hand first to my left, so I'll start with her. Go ahead, Councillor Bradrick. Thank you, through you, Chair, and thank you very much, uh, Staff Sergeant, for joining us this evening. Um, I certainly can speak uh, for myself living in the rural area of West Lincoln and for uh, some of my other fellow council members that the speed that people travel in our rural areas are very concerning and uh, some and when there is an accident it can be extremely as you know very catastrophic and you did talk a little bit about project speed alert 
uh, in your presentation. And I was hoping you could just maybe expand on that a little bit uh, in regards to how that plays out in the community and uh, what we could be looking for as community members. Through you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the question and thank you for your welcome. Uh, Project uh, Speed Alert is being spearheaded or driven by our traffic enforcement unit and they will be targeting rural areas with the NAGR for speed enforcement. And as you stated, uh, with greater speed comes greater impact with respect to traffic collisions and vehicles traveling at higher speed uh, have a more uh, tendency for more catastrophic injuries and damage. And when I was collecting my uh, information for the presentation, I spoke with the staff sergeant who uh, oversees the traffic enforcement unit and with respect to the fatal collisions, his comment to me was speed was a contributing factor in most, if not all, of the fatal collisions. So in addition to our efforts locally within 8th District to target speeding in rural areas, we welcome our members of the Traffic Enforcement Unit who will conduct both mobile and stationary radar speed enforcement in the rural areas of the municipality uh, to help drive that message. Thank you very much. I do have one more question. Sure, that's go ahead, right Council you, Chair. Um, when you were speaking of your example on the communication uh, or the, uh, I think it was a break and enter, if I'm not mistaken, in your early part of your presentation, if that was to happen in West Lincoln, what type of response time would we expect as a community? Is there an average response time? The av I know from our managing police performance study that was done in 2019, the targeted response time for a priority call such as that would be seven minutes. Uh, as you've said yourself, especially West Lincoln is a very large geographic area. We do have officers dedicated specifically to this area, uh, but as with any policing call for service, officers can be shifted from one patrol zone to another quite quickly, instantaneously, uh, if that priority service uh, call does occur. So we always like to maintain a quick response time, especially in an emergency. Uh, but geography sometimes plays a part in that as well. But uh, there are officers dedicated to, specifically to the community of West Lincoln. And as well, we can shift our police resources uh, to assist when the need arises. Thank you. And that's all my questions for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Got Mayor Gannett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, thank you for coming this evening. We're really pleased to have you here. Um, I do want to say that we have noticed an increased police presence in West Lincoln in the last little while, and we certainly want that to continue. So we're grateful for what is happening now and certainly want to see it improve. Um, uh, just a couple of comments. Um, one of the things about response time, uh, when the chief spoke at the region, he talked about a 10-minute um, average response time. Um, but he also said that was being monitored. Are you aware of that, keeping track of the monitoring of the time it take, actually takes for calls um, so that when there comes a time to uh, apply for or look for more police out our way, there would actually be some data. Is that something that, that you are aware of at your level or is that higher level thinking? Through you, Mr. Chair, Your Worship, thank you for the question and you're welcome. Uh, and I know when, when I referenced that managing police performance study, uh, that is something done uh, at a level higher than mine, but those numbers are always being examined to ensure we have adequate resources and can provide a uh, reasonable and expected response time. So those uh, numbers are always being studied and reviewed to ensure we have adequate police resources to meet community needs and ensure we are meeting our targeted our response times. So I thank you for that comment because what we, we tend to hear are from people who it's being 20 minutes or 25 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. So I, I'm just, I just, I guess what I really want is to make sure that at the bottom end, the, where it's really critical, where the people are doing the work in West Lincoln, that those times are also being kept track of so that when we're looking at, at the average that we have something to come back on and say, hey, you know, two people or three people assigned only to West Lincoln um, is not enough. As this community grows in particular, that's what we're looking at. So, so as we grow, we also want to see those services eventually grow. And so if the data is being collected now, then, then that's in our favor. So I appreciate that. The other thing that I wanted to mention 
mention is how pleased I was to hear about the similar program to what Councillor Bradrick was just talking about on our rural roads. I had a conversation last week with um, Acting Chief sitting next to you from our fire services, and of course they respond, as you're well aware, to the calls as well. But I was quite surprised to hear from our chief that nearly 25% of the calls from April of 22 to April 1st of 23 were traffic or motor vehicle accidents. And so that's quite alarming as, as a, a representative of this, our municipality to know that our residents are being impacted. Now we also realize some of those are not people from West Lincoln, maybe people passing through West Lincoln, but that doesn't change the speeds and the danger to our residents on the road. So, um, I, the fact that you're working together on that and you're actually examining what's happening on those rural roads and the speeds that people are traveling is um, something that we want you to continue to do. So thank you for that. Thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate that comment. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ganan. Councillor Shechuk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Usually we get a rap on the knuckles if we try to re say the same thing as the last person, but I do want to thank you for being here with statistics information pertaining to West Lincoln. So it is a repeat, but I think we all... I know that I really seriously appreciate your being here and reporting to us. <clears throat> I was extremely interested in your comment about oversized trucks infiltrating uh, our road systems to bypass the scales. It, it seems, and I live on one of the busier roads <clears throat> in the rural area, I won't tell you where just in case you want to watch me, but <clears throat> no, uh, I, we noticed that on Sunday nights a lot of the transport trucks are coming along Highway 20 and then continuing through Bismarck all the way through. But that, that is what we've seen over the past number of years, but now we're seeing it at night. And in fact, just as I was pulling out to try and get here, I waited while, while I had 11 cars go past the house, which is, is unusual, but we're getting a lot of infiltration of cars. I understand that the QEW is getting busy, but when you say you're diverting trucks or trying to intercept them, what does that mean? I'm through you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, maybe I didn't explain. Or maybe uh, I didn't understand. No, I, I uh, essentially what I meant by diversion is the uh, Ministry of Transportation operates a way scale and vehicle inspection area in Vineland, just right. near Victoria Avenue. Uh, when the ministry activates, and if you've traveled along the Queen Elizabeth Highway, when the scale is open and active, there's a set of lights that flash right. on the highway. Some truck operators, for uh, given reasons, either they're unlicensed, the truck's overweight, it hasn't uh, maybe been inspected and is of poor mechanical fitness or uh, quality, will uh, exit the QEW at Victoria Avenue, Jordan Road, and divert through the scales, uh, through the regional surface streets, in an attempt to avoid the scales uh. for uh, detection, enforcement, penalties, et cetera. So when we do those uh, joint efforts, it's to target those uh, operators of vehicles that are intentionally diverting the scale. Uh, if you're driving from Buffalo to make a delivery in Toronto, uh, Across the top. it's interesting why you'd be driving along mud, fly, 20. 65. Uh, exactly, to get back down on the QAW at Ontario Street in Beamsville. Uh, and I know I participated uh, hands-on in all of our uh, truck safety days. And I must say that it wasn't just concentrating on large commercial motor vehicles, uh, but we also had a emissions enforcement team on hand uh, from the MTO to check for uh, vehicles that maybe aren't uh, in the best mechanical fitness and uh, emitting uh, too much noxious, noxious substances and as well overall mechanical fitness of smaller commercial motor vehicles, say your uh, truck and trailer combinations of roofers or landscapers uh, who maybe have let their uh, mechanical fitness slide as well. So uh, it did again, concentrate on large commercial motor vehicles, uh, but we've also targeted days where we've looked at overall uh, road safety and road vehicles. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Shisha. Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, uh, and th to you, to our staff, Sergeant, thank you. As, as you've heard from everyone, you'll probably continue to hear. Thank you so much for giving up time of your evening to come up here and make that presentation and take questions from us. Um, 
Mr. Chair, part of my, my comments will actually come from the CEO, and I'll, I'll get to that part in a second because there's a, a question we have for you um, that has come in through a letter from the police service we maybe want some clarity on. But I, the one thing I want to start is I want to thank, as far, thank you guys as far as the work you do on social media. Um, I, I think as you probably hear more times than not, and I know I hear from any residents, you know, where's a cop when you need one, right? You know, everyone's always witnesses, you know, the infractions that happen. And, uh, and yet when we are able to see some of that stuff that you guys post, it really does help show people when, of course, you guys are here we just don't see it, that you're actively patrolling our community, keeping our community safe. And so that's very much appreciated. Um, that number that you gave, um, I think is great to have, as well as the thing we learned last term was the online reporting uh, through a traffic complaint portal that you guys have. And I doubt you'll have this information. I'll ask it anyways, but by no obligation. Um, well, I fault you on not having the information, but I was just curious. Do you have any idea what the numbers are in terms of complaints received online for our municipality? Um, and again, if not, I, I realize it's kind of like a, a, a cold call of a question, but I'm just kind of curious how many complaints are received and how many are followed up on through the usage of that online um, portal. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the warm welcome, and I'm sorry I don't have those numbers for you at hand, but those are definitely numbers that I can get for you. Okay. And I just want to clarify as well, when you refer to the online portal, are you referring to the online traffic, traffic. complaint That's versus online crime reporting? Correct. I'm specifically speaking to the tra I know you have two options that you can click between um, the, the crime and the traffic one. So I'm specifically speaking to the traffic one. And as well, when I do uh, reach out to our traffic unit for those numbers, do you want numbers snagger on a whole, or if I can kind of drill those down, would you be looking for specific uh, West Lincoln numbers? Ideally, West Lincoln, if that's not too much to ask and not too much trouble, but in the end, if they only have the numbers for the region, that is fine as well. But it'd be wonderful if you could disclose any of that stuff that's specifically related to West Lincoln. That is definitely something I'll follow up on and get back to uh, yourself or through the CAO if that's acceptable. Perfect. Uh, your second question you asked was with respect to social media. There is an active eight district Twitter account and uh, the use of Twitter, I guess initially or first and foremost would be for public safety information that we can share on that social media platform. But as you commented as well, uh, Mr. Councillor, it's also uh, gives us the ability to showcase to the residents that uh, this is some of the work that we're doing that they may not be aware of be a targeted traffic enforcement in rural areas, uh, lock it or lose it campaigns, even officers out walking the beat at the farmer's market. Yes. Uh, it shows members of the community uh, other things that we do do uh, that they may not be aware of. And I know, uh, and I'm glad I have this stat with me, uh, in one year we've increased our Twitter followers by 18%. Excellent. So it's nice to get the buy-in too from uh, the community. Uh, because again, it was there to drive that public safety message, but it's also there for us to showcase the good work that is being done within the communities within 8th District, West Lincoln, Grimsby, or Lincoln, and as well let the community know what we're uh, doing when they may not necessarily see us all the time. That's wonderful, and honestly, I can't thank you guys enough for that, because again, that's the, the biggest reinforcement we're able to show people is when you are in the community. And I think our community also um, respects seeing that, because I think a lot of us feel like we're just sitting ducks, we're out in, the, out in the middle of nowhere, and a lot of times we're forgotten about it. If we don't see it, we just assume you're not even come by. So to have that definitely really helps. Um, I would say our biggest, just to kind of put it out there, our, I think one of our biggest issues um, is, the, you know, is speeding, and it also is people not choosing to use the stop signs to stop. You know, that is a, a big issue. In some situations, they make no effort to stop at any time. I've seen a few where they just speed up through it. And that maybe comes down to the dynamic of our current infrastructure and the way how the roads are set up that hopefully we're going to address as our traffic calming policy and our transportation master plan comes to reality. But in the meantime, we appreciate that, uh, all the work you guys do. So the other part of my, my question and comment here, and I'll go to our CAO, is one of the other committees I'm a part of is West Lincoln Santa Claus Parade Committee. And, and so... Last year was the first real year we were able to actually do a parade. You know, once the provincial regulations were lifted, we were able to kind of go forward and bring the parade aspect back. And in dealing with that, we had to take on some of the responsibility in terms of traffic control and managing. And, and so I'll, I guess at this point I'll go to our CEO, but there's a question we have specifically about what we can count on in the future from support from the police services because we received a letter that kind of indicated that support will probably not be there. And we were wondering if maybe you can give some clarity as to why. But I'll, if I could, Mr. Chair, I'm going to go to our CEO to read to that or speak to that. Go ahead. Yep. It's through you, Chair, to Staff Sergeant Lamanche. Um, I apologize, first off, for springing this on you because I would have 
giving you a heads up, but as um, Councillor um, Raleigh just mentioned, there is a, um, uh, an issue on tonight's agenda that deals with our parade. And, um, and then, as it turns out, um, Police Chief Brian McCullough sent all the CAOs a, a letter regarding uh, some shifts in the services. And I hadn't, I'd only sent it to senior staff, so um, I had not shared it with, with council yet. But the, um, what, what it was really speaking of was the special duty requests um, that are going to be, it sounds as though they're being cut back. And it basically says special events such as road races or parades using planned routes that are on municipal or regional roads might have to be altered because there, is, there isn't, um, there may not be as much support. And also suggested that perhaps we go to some security services instead, rather than going to this this route. So, are you able to talk about how that might work and what we could expect? And again, my apologies for just tossing it over there right now. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, I am aware of the letter, and I did receive a copy of the letter that was emailed uh, to all of the uh, municipal CEOs across the region, and it speaks to our. Uh, staffing pressures and our ability to uh, perform special duties or provide officers for special duties. As I interpret it, and I'm willing to work with uh, the municipality with respect to a Santa Claus parade, I don't think it would be a hard no. Uh, no, we will not provide you any officers. No, we will not assist you. I think it's something that as the time gets closer uh, that we can work collaboratively on and uh, it's not a refusal to provide you officers, but maybe just taking a different look or an approach as to uh, how we can best use both of our resources uh, a little more positive, or not positively, but maybe make the best use of the resources that we have. Uh, that could be from, is it altering the route? Nobody wants to see a shortened Santa Claus parade or maybe deviate from uh, what's been the accepted norm or practice years gone by but maybe we can sit down together as that time gets closer and we can work collaboratively to still make the parade happen uh, and you know, taking into account public safety, participant safety, and still make for a positive event that the community will enjoy. Okay, perfect. So if I could just, I'll finish off there. Uh, I appreciate hearing that because I, I think I know being part of that committee as a liaison, I know some of the concerns were as we deal with some of the other dr uh, growing costs, we already kind of have factor what we know we can expect in terms of what that cost is going to look like from the policing aspect. And as you know, it, it's a very complicated thing. I mean, we're not in a situation where we want to put volunteers in the traffic control, which is essentially what we'd probably be po uh, uh, positioned with. Um, I guess the the other part of it I wanted to make sure it was clear is because it just came to my attention as well, and I'm sure it's not aware you're not aware of this in any capacity because it kind of falls into the administration side. Um, but the Santa Claus Parade Committee themselves finally just got an invoice from two years ago when we did the drive-through parade. As a result, we've learned that the original invoice was being sent to the town of Lincoln. And so we wanted to ensure the messaging was clear that the, we were not in a situation that we were trying to dodge a bill, um, more or less we just never received it. And then the timing when we organized for the second one, no one had said anything, so we were waiting for that to come as all as one. So I, again, I understand mistakes happen. That certainly isn't your responsibility in any, any capacity, um, but I wanted to make sure this wasn't, uh, oh, we don't know if we're gonna get paid. So let's just kind of put this general feeler out there to let them know that you know we're not sure what the future is going to look like because it mentions in the letter too about competing um, what's the word they use it's competing yeah uh, to, uh, uh, apologies I should have this memorized at this point basically competing in and other competing operational priorities and, and so that's part of that's the wording that stood out with me is like oh maybe we're not going to be prioritized because there's that misunderstanding so I just want to make sure that was very clear through you mr. chair no that's uh, and I apologize for our uh, professional staff making making that clerical error and directing the invoice to the incorrect uh, municipality uh, what you mentioned for for competing uh, interests and all uh, say example Canada Day is coming up uh, St. Catharines has an event Niagara Falls has an event Welland has an event West Lincoln has an event Grimsby has an event and they're all looking for uh, a collection of pay duty officers to provide security to their events and there's a finite uh, number of resources that may be available and each competing municipality may not be aware of the demands that other municipalities have placed so as I said, as time gets closer and you're aware of a targeted date for your event, uh, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you or other members of the committee, uh, work collaboratively and we can get together and come up with a plan that 
that uh, works for everybody. Perfect. Thank you. And it's the last Saturday in November, so if we can call dibs on that right now, I think the okay. community would be pretty pleased with me. But anyways, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the information you've given. Uh, that's all I need, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Rose. So I got Madam CEO, and then I got Councillor Bell. Go ahead, Madam CEO. Oh, thank you again through you, Chair, to um, the Staff Sergeant. Um, we, at our senior management table, we talk about a number of issues and things that could be coming up. And one of the sort of brewing issues is some sort of nuisance issues at our West Lincoln Community Centre, which I think we've, we've talked to your staff about before. But um, I think you can anticipate another call because we, we need to figure out some new strategies to um, deal with a group of, of, of our um, visitors that are um, less respectful of some of the spaces than others are. Through you, Mr. Chair, I welcome those discussions and please, by all means, reach out to me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to come meet with uh, the stakeholders in the group and come up with a strategy to address. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the first community to have those same or similar concerns. Uh, and what may have worked uh, very well in other communities, we could also transfer to West Link to address those same issues. Uh, I'd like to sit down and if there's a targeted time, a targeted date, a uh, specific group, uh, and we can come up with some strategies that may help mitigate those uh, issues uh, before they grow and get larger with the nicer weather approaching as well. Thank you, Madam CEO. Councillor Bell. <clears throat> Good evening, thank you very much for coming. And it was a great presentation, very informative. Just a quick question, going back to your speed, in 22, we had 481 <clears throat> speed-related uh, issues, and to date, we have 103, and we're three and a half months into it. So with that kind of a number, we're in a downward trend. Slightly, not major, but just a little bit. Uh, seeing that, that's encouraging, and I'd really like to see you keep up the enforcement on the speed because as you've heard around the horseshoe, it is an issue. Uh, and I'm sure other communities have the same thing, especially in the rural. I mean, they see a paved road and look out, we're flying. So I really appreciate you guys for what you do. So thank you very kindly for coming. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, I will comment that speed enforcement in the early part of the year, uh, a lot of times environmental conditions, uh, snow, sleet, ice will uh, act as a natural speed barrier. Uh, so now that the, uh, well, not today, but uh, the winter uh, will break, I hope, uh, and the nicer weather approaches will take a more uh, active role in our speed enforcement because as you said yourself, sir, uh, with the nicer weather and an open stretch of road, uh, you know, speeding is a concern in our rural municipalities and we'll be definitely uh, targeting speed enforcement throughout the year. Thank, Thank you, Councillor Bell. Councillor Rayner, and then I got Madam, Madam Mayor. Uh, Go ahead, Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through to the Staff Sergeant, once again, thank you for coming. I appreciate uh, you coming. Years ago, uh, when I was first starting in Council, I asked that the Police Chiefs be the Staff Sergeants from Grimsby Detachment come up on a quarterly basis and work with us and hear what we've got to find from our areas and what you guys have got in your areas. Um, it's been hit and miss for a number of years, but I'd love to see you come back on a regular basis because it's useful information you have and it's useful information we have. And the two of us working together can only make it a better situation. So I really appreciate that. Uh, with regards to the rural, and I live in one of the, the big rural areas, uh, there are two items to me that are the big ones out in my area. One is speed and the other is alcohol, and the two don't mix very well. Um, what have you done with regards, or what is the force going to do with regards to monitoring that the alcohol situation in the country and um, the best way to tell is they like to leave the evidence so um, you go around any of the ditches in my area and you can make a fair bit of money on beer cans uh, so um, the concern obviously is drinking and driving and the possibility of leading into further accidents that could happen is there anything that your detachment has planned um, infrequently uh, out in the country, um, late at night, uh, just sitting on the side of the roads out in the country and see what goes by at 2 or 3 in the morning. Uh, chances are one of them could be drinking and driving because 
there's so much evidence laying in the ditches that it, it must be going on on a pretty regular basis. So. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, for your kind comments and for your question. Uh, through speed enforcement uh, in the rural areas comes contact with the drivers of a motor vehicle. If they are found to be drinking or uh, believed to be impaired, mm -hmm. we're getting more and more officers trained in standard field sobriety testing. Uh, to detect impaired operation as well as impaired by drug offenses and as well we have the alcohol screening devices that are available to us and we can make a demand to drivers uh, who we suspect have consumed uh, any alcohol and have gotten behind the wheel of a motor vehicle so our patrols do occur 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, there is no less officers working on a night shift than a day shift, as you may uh, think. As a matter of fact, your uh, uh, number of officers actually goes up on a uh, weekend uh, that's on patrol. So it is a concern, and they are actively out there. And with traffic enforcement comes that contact for uh, drivers. And as well, I encourage anyone to report any erratic driving, any suspected impaired driving, and those calls are dispatched on a priority basis to investigate uh, through you mr. chair um, you were mentioning about uh, people driving and their habits during bad weather and stuff um, some of the roads in my area in Caster have have natural uh, grades that deter that kind of driving habits and the, the proof of the pudding was about I guess it was six weeks ago or whatever we had an ice storm and that morning there were five cars in the ditches around my property uh, so they were driving as if it was a normal day. We're not driving towards the weather conditions. There's a curve in the road, and they went to turn on that curve, and the car decided it was going to go straight. Uh, so um, there is, that's, again, a speed issue, but it's very difficult to monitor out there because we have so much rural areas, and you have so limited force that can do it, um, that it's difficult to, to really keep it under control out there because at times... They think it's a free run, and some of these roads are pretty straight, and they can really go pretty fast. And then we're going to get into more trouble coming up because we're going to end up with farmers getting on the field. So now you're going to end up with tractors out there, discs out there, and equipment, and these guys are flying down the roads as if nobody was there. Um, so there is potential concerns, and we've had some serious accidents with tractors before. Um, so uh, the more you people can be out there, the more you're seen. Uh, the more it would help to deter. It would really be appreciated. Thank you, sir. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rayner. Uh, Madam Mayor, and then i got Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just further to what Councillor Rayner was speaking about, um, I was sitting waiting for my opportunity for a second one to ask about ride programs. Do you still do such a thing? I know that... You know, over the years of living here, periodically there have been downtown programs set up on a weekend, especially summer weekends and things going on. Is that something that, that still it happens where it's an actually a set time surprising people and a full out program set up to sort of um, test drivers coming and going from wherever they've been on a Saturday evening or whatever? Through you, Mr. Chair, and Your Worship, thank you for your question. Yes, the Niagara Regional Police Service still does conduct uh, ride or sobriety checkpoints. Uh, they're not set with any uh, schedule, and that's exactly that. It's random. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't always a Friday, Saturday. Uh, we've done them during the day. We've done them on the weekend. We've done them through the week, and it's uh, done that way so we aren't predictable. It's random, and yes, they are still conducted. I have I have heard comments recently about about um, sort of alluding to the alcohol situation, and we um, just did a bottle drive with Kiwanis on the weekend. There were a lot of bottles that came in that very obviously had been on ditches and things that people had been doing some spring cleanup and brought them in to donate to Kiwanis. We were glad to have them, but it was not an, a very good sign in terms of what's going on on the roads um, in West Lincoln. So um, thank you for that. No, thank you, and I'll bring that comment back to. Uh, my patrol officers and make them aware as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ganan. Uh, Councilor Riley. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, one, I just make a quick comment just to what Councilor Rayner mentioned there. I, I think as the community goes forward, we're, we're enhancing some of our gravel roads in our rural area, and this is only going to 
the, the speeding issues are only going to get worse as we enhance a gravel road uh, to a tar and chip road or even an asphalt road. You know, we're creating a lot more liability and hazard in areas that can't be patrolled or policed 24 7 because there's so much. You can only be in one place at one time and you can't necessarily cover six point whatever kilometers. So that is another thing that this council needs to consider. But my question to you, Mr. Chair, to our staff sergeant is have you, um, is there any plan or are you already working on anything? Has there been any efforts to do um, any outreaches, uh, outreach programs for schools uh, in our municipality? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. With respect to like a driver education type of in any kind of programs, I just kind of, and as far as information goes, like be able to re, uh, relay back to the community. Is there any efforts from um, whether it's your district or any other districts to be? You know, is there? I guess I'm just looking for a standard school outreach program where you're just informing students of um, you know um, community safety, um, any kind of you know self awareness. Uh, you know we're in a community where we are we do feel like sitting ducks. And just the <coughs> other day on one of our social media groups because our community is very hands-on and they do a really good job of helping to protect each other let people know when they're concerned or they see something suspicious whether it's potential carjackings or potential predators we're just kind of curious what the police are doing in terms if they're making any extra efforts to help get kids recognize the stranger danger or anything in that capacity uh, recently our school resource officer program underwent a change uh, that's now the core unit which is the community oriented response and engagement unit and they don't just target schools, but overall uh, community issues or problems. Uh, and I'll divert back to a larger municipality, Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, Welland. Uh, they do a lot of initiatives with those that are housing challenged, uh, may find themselves living on the streets of our communities. And as well, they do go and do school uh, presentations and involve themselves in the schools uh, when they're invited to do so. If someone would like a uh, some information or a presentation or to sit down and speak with an officer, uh, please by all means reach out to me and I'll see if I can connect those two groups. Okay, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, again, I just was curious what efforts we're making, if you guys were going to initiate anything or if it's more of a you wait till you hear from them uh, a kind of thing there. So that's fine and I can definitely reach out to some of the schools that are interested in that and see if they would reach out to you. Um, maybe before you leave, if I can get your card or something. Of that'd course. Be wonderful. But thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Thank you, members of committee. I think those are all the questions. Um, I, I didn't really, I think I just had one. In your presentation, uh, Staff Sergeant, you noticed that the numbers of uh, motor vehicle break-ins have went down. Now, is that because more perps have been busted, or is that because people are wised up and locked the doors? I think, if, Mr. Chair, if I was uh, to say, I think it's just people getting into a routine of locking their cars. Correct. Uh, it's... Uh, and from offenders that we have arrested, uh, they'll walk through a neighborhood and they'll just pull random door handles. Mm -hmm. And they'll stop at one that's unlocked uh, and rummage to the car for anything that they deem of value or anything that they can uh, get their hands on. If people do get into a routine, I know that uh, living in maybe not a large metropolis uh, you know people may feel a little at ease without having to lock their vehicles lock their garages lock their sheds well us country Some, people that's what we do right not so. where I was going but <laughs> it's okay or, or, or maybe even so. lock maybe even locking their houses when they leave yeah uh, and all it takes is one person looking for an opportunity and I'm thinking it's through our uh, social media efforts and as well uh, people uh, getting into a routine and uh, now a lot of times you don't even need to leave your house to lock your car you can either do it through an app on your phone if it's uh, a newer vehicle or even a key fob if you're close enough to the house uh, you can lock your car and uh, a lot of times that will deter uh, people because it's, it's a crime of opportunity if the vehicle's locked uh, then 99 percent of the time that person will just walk by or carry on so I think the theft from auto problem uh, is an effort on our part through investigation, but uh, could probably mostly be attributed to people in the community taking that little extra step as part of their nightly routine or when they get home from their outing, uh, take that half second, hit the button on your key fob, lock your car. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'd just like to say, you know, 
we could probably keep you here all night, but I know you probably got a lot of uh, you know things to do. So, but I'd like to thank you for your presentation, uh, Staff Sergeant Leemich. Uh, it's always a pleasure having, obviously, you know, the NRP come out and do their presentations uh, when we can. And uh, I'm glad the members of the committee had a lot of wholesome questions. They asked some very good questions, and I'm glad you gave them. Real, real good answers, and that's really going to help our community. So, uh, just before uh, you leave, I don't know. I know we have uh, Regional Councilor Whitavin here. I don't know if you had anything you'd like to add before he leaves. I can send him off, or I'm good. I have his number and I have his email. So, okay, perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm getting questions that were asked this evening were, were relative. To okay, excellent. Well, I'd like to say thank you for once again for, for attending this evening, and I really, really appreciate the presentation, how it really focused on the statistics of West Lincoln. So thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Your Worship, thank you for having me, members of Council, town staff, and uh, welcome to attend any time you'd like to have me. And, Councillor, I'll leave you my card uh, before I go. And, uh, Bev, please reach out as we have in the past, and we've had some dialogue uh, when I first arrived, and it's been very positive. So. Okay. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members of uh, committee, we're moving on to item A2423. Uh, Rajdeep Dillon uh, and Carlo Alvarez, KPMG. We have a presentation on the audit service plan. And I think they are virtual, so I'll turn to Kevin if they want to uh, turn their cameras on and whoever wants to start the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening uh, to members of the committee and uh, Madam Mayor. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you uh, virtually today. Uh, this is our uh, first year end with the Township of West Lincoln, and it's always tough to follow, you know, the staff sergeant from the police services. You know, effectively, we as auditors provide a, a level of comfort on your financial statements uh, annually. Uh, your group pr produces a set of financial statements that are used by, you know, other uh, levels of government, uh, council for decision making, uh, as well as the taxpayers. And we effectively, you know, are a second set of eyes, you know, that provides some comfort that the statements that you produce are fairly stated. And so with that, uh, we develop a audit plan, uh, which is uh, the reason why we're here uh, speaking with you today. And Raj and I will walk through, you know, what I would call uh, the highlights of the audit plan uh, as it pertains to the 2022 uh, financial audit. And if you're following along in your package uh, within the audit uh, planning report, it is on page six where we would like to begin. Just to make some overriding uh, comments about highlights, uh, certainly, you know, from an audit standpoint, uh, we do not audit every single transaction. We do not audit every single uh, piece of paper. So we focus in our energy uh, and our time on those areas that we consider to be significant, either because of risk or because of items being material. And for every single audit in Canada, uh, and this is not unique uh, to West Lincoln, but there are always two specific risks that we're always required to consider. The first being the fraud risk associated with revenue recognition, and the second risk being associated with the risk of management override of controls. We will report to you uh, in the month of June when we present the audit findings report um, on our procedures that we performed to specifically address these two fraud risks and we will report um, to you on the results of all of our procedures uh, at that time. From a materiality standpoint, again, to my earlier comment uh, that we don't audit every single transaction, we have this concept of materiality that we use to plan and perform the audit. Uh, we have a, a certain uh, level of science that goes into how we determine what we consider to be material uh, on page six of the audit plan, you can see that we have set our materiality threshold at $475,000. What that means is when we report our audit findings to you in the month of June, we will tally up any and all misstatements 
and we will compare it to that dollar threshold. And we'll get into, uh, in a few slides down the road, um, a little bit more about uh, what that means to the town. From a accounting standpoint, uh, I can report to all of you that there are no new changes in any of the accounting standards. So the way that the debits and credits come together in your financial statements would be based on the same premise as the previous year. So very quiet from a regulatory standpoint. Uh, from a audit standard perspective, there is one new auditing standard, uh, which we'll get into shortly uh, a little further on in the presentation. Other areas of focus, you know, if you were to thumb down your financial statements, you know, certainly deferred revenues, accounts receivable, tax revenues, other funding sources. You know, if you look at the majority of our audit focus, it'll be on those items uh, that are most uh, significant in your financial statements. Now, I'm not sure if you wanted to show the audit plan on screen. Um, if not, we can continue on. On page eight of the audit plan, uh, again, focusing on, on materiality, if there is one number uh, that I would like all of you to remember out of this presentation is the number being $23,000. So we have our materiality of $475,000, which is individually a rather big number. Uh, we as auditors will have a much lower tolerance for audit differences, and that is set at $23,000. So any and all misstatements that we detect in our audit that exceed $23,000, we will certainly be bringing those forward uh, for discussion when we present the audit findings report. And we will also uh, present not just those audit misstatements that are uncorrected, but we will also present audit misstatements that are corrected. I often get questions from council about, you know, why would we speak to adjustments that management has corrected? The reason why is because often if we come to you in the month of June and we have 10, 15, 20 misstatements, that would raise some questions in terms of was the audit timing uh, appropriate or whether or not uh, the management team has sufficient resources to do what they need to do to provide us with a adequate audit package. And so that's the reason why we would speak to both uncorrected and corrected. Uh, moving on further in the audit plan, uh, if you were to, you know, read last year's financial statements, you know, if you were to go right to the title page, it'll have the word consolidated. So the financial statements include what I would refer to as three components. You have the town, you have the library board, and then you have the trust funds. So the materiality threshold that we set overall, we effectively allocate uh, among the three components and each of those components has a separate uh, audit file and audit reporting. Included in your package, uh, we've included a few slides on slide 12 and 13 that go through some of those uh, more material uh, areas in which we will spend uh, the majority of our time. I would like to highlight that there is one area in which your management team uh, engages a third party, a third party actuary to assist with the development of what we call a employee future benefit liability. We as auditors, we do not simply rely on what that actuary has produced. Uh, we obtain their report and we assess their uh, assumptions that they used as part of their actuarial work and we assess whether or not it's consistent with our expectations as well as other municipalities uh, within Ontario. In terms of timing, which is outlined on page 14, so we will conduct the audit field work in the month of May and then have the, uh, the meeting that are reporting uh, in the month of June. 
it is always important for, for us as auditors to make a comment about independence. It is a cornerstone of our profession. I can verbally uh, confirm with all of you that we as KPMG are independent of the town. Uh, we have not been engaged to provide any tax services or advisory services that would threaten our independence. And the, the one line in which we always keep top of mind is that we always need to make sure that we as auditors never act in the capacity of management. We are here to propose entries. We are not here to actually do uh, the work that, uh, that the management team should be performing. Within the audit plan, there are a few appendices. Uh, uh, my plan is not uh, to go through uh, each and every page in detail. Earlier, I made the comment that there were no new accounting standards for fiscal 2022. There is a new accounting standard that will be effective for the town in 2023, and it is entitled Asset Retirement Obligations. There are a few other standards, but they're not as significant as this asset retirement obligation. And when we present the audit findings report to you in June, we will speak uh, a little bit more about what that new accounting standard will mean for 2023. The reason why I'm bringing it up today is because that is one of the more involved and and I would say one of the bigger new accounting standards that has been introduced in the last five to eight years. So for many municipalities, it will be a big deal. Um, and so we'll comment on that um, when we report on the findings. There are you know, a few other accounting standards that have been uh, included in the package, but uh, none would rise to the significance of that um, asset retirement obligation standard. Also included in the package, there are a few slides on a new auditing standard. Uh, this is effective for the 2022 fiscal year. I do not envision that this would result in your management team doing anything differently in terms of what they provide to us as auditors. This standard is more for the actual practitioners being Raj and I in terms of how we document and to the level of depth that we document controls in our audit file. Uh, lastly, within the audit plan uh, on page 29, you know, certainly we have a, a significant amount of insights to share uh, with the municipality. There are links that are included in the package that are available to all of you uh, on the committee, uh, just in terms of your own um, uh, education and, and for some nighttime reading. And certainly we will present uh, additional thought leadership um, come June when we present the audit finance report. So, you know, for us as, as KPMG, this will be the first year that we are auditing your books and records. Um, but, you know, certainly we look forward to the experience and uh, and again, um, you know, I would say that um, pleased to be here. And you know, with that, uh, I will pause and uh, back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. I think it's Salvarez, right? I had Alvarez in our presentation, but is it Salvarez or Alvarez? There is no S on the last name, so Alvarez. Oh, okay, sorry, because your screen was saying Salvarez. I was just didn't know if I mis made a mistake there, but thank you. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, and thank you, Mr. Dillon, for the presentation. Uh, it's actually very informative, and actually those numbers are, uh, you know, it's, they, they are informative numbers that you're keeping us to make our, make our brain stay with. So the, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, uh, any members of the committee, any questions for KPMG? Any questions? Okay. Seeing none. You know, it's, I think they got all their questions out with their staff sergeant so, uh, at the moment, So, but I don't see any at the, from any members of committee. Any staff members want to add anything? Nothing? Okay. Well, thank you for your presentation, uh, Mr. Alvarez and Mr. Dillon. Really appreciate it this evening. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you, everyone. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, anybody in the, I guess, online gallery to request any items on the agenda? Kevin? None. Not seeing any, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in our gallery? Councilor Whitaby, nothing? Okay, so we do have uh, something from that needs to be written or read into the record from Councillor Riley. Correct. So to be clear, this is not necessarily from me. This is uh, from our chair of like uh, West Lincoln Santa Claus. I got to read this. I'll hand it to you afterwards. Okay. Um, but I had reached out to the clerk today, so staff's fully aware of this. So they gave me the exact order and how I need to do this. So once I, if I have so your permission all, to go by, forward, by all means. Okay. So this is to request an item on the agenda, which is item A twenty eight. Dash 23 recommendation report T09 2023 2023 community sponsorship and cemetery and hall boards grants. Um, so before me, I, our chair sends her regrets. She would have liked to actually been here tonight herself and been able to make this uh, not so much a presentation, but this comment regarding this particular item. And I'm going to read it. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Uh, so it says, Dear West Lincoln Council and staff. On behalf of the West Lincoln Santa Claus Parade Committee, I would like to thank you for taking the time to consider our grant request. The amount received from the grant is essential to our basic operating budget and ensures the event's success. As you may be aware, the cost of living has increased significantly in the past few years, and the parade is, is not immune to this current reality. Entertainment, health and safety, region, and policing costs have increased, therefore raising our overall monetary need from previous years and I would like to take this time to outline our $7,500 request. While we conduct a significant amount of fundraising by outreaching to over 200 local businesses, we only receive financial support donations from roughly 26 community businesses and partners in 2022, totaling approximately $9,050. Unfortunately, due to circumstances outside of the committee's control and being associated with council as a committee of council, we did experience a loss of previous donors due to the impacts of COVID-19 and the necessary measures council and staff took during that time. As you may know, not everyone was in agreement with these measures required by the province, which created a significant divide within our community. Unfortunately, the parade had not been immune to this reality either. In conjunction with this, many businesses also expressed losses during the pandemic and are not in a position to support the parade. In 2022, our entertainment costs totaled roughly 8000 This included three bands and three entertainers. In our experience and through our research, the average cost for a performer generally falls between $800 to $1,500, and the average cost of a, of a, of a band, you know, an example, Burlington Teen Tour, costs uh, between $3,000 to $4,000 with more recreational bands ranging from $500 to $1,500. Following our experience in 2022, we received a great amount of positive feedback on the performers and bands we hired for the event. They were definitely a highlight, and many of the performers and bands appreciated our organized approach and taking part in the event. Based on this, the committee hopes to increase the number of bands and or performers uh, at the very least to ensure, I'm just trying to read this how it's written, to ensure we can have the same, if not similar, in our 2023 parade. Uh, for example, hiring Burlington Team Tour Band in the Top Hat Marching Orchestra would be ideal, but based on 2022 pricing, this would cost us about $6,800 and would not be possible without more support from council and the community. The costs mentioned above do not include policing, which is around $1,345, the Niagara Region bills for road closures and signage, which is about $1,839, and general health and safety costs, advertising, bank fees, the sponsor, skate event, and other miscellaneous costs, rough, roughly averaging around $2,800. Fortunately, due to selling some of the leftover decor, from the 2021 drive through parade, some carry over from previous years and the 2022 community grant, we were able to pull it off. So I'm gonna just pause there for a second. There's a little bit more to read. I, if you're having a hard time following, I'm just reading it how it's written and they're just trying to reference how we were able to make last year a success with some of the restrictions that were in place. So I'm gonna carry forward here. Um, got about a page left here. However, there is significant concern in the longevity and success of future years due to the substantial costs, as mentioned above, volunteer time commitment and liability without staff support from senior management and council support. 
Unlike other communities within the Niagara region, the West Lincoln Santa Claus Parade Committee has never had a determined yearly operating cost, defined roles for the township staff, and or involvement from council. This is at no fault to anyone. It is just a matter of how things have always been. However, to my limited understanding, the shift to becoming a committee of council protected both the volunteers and township with little of those perceived liabilities being removed from volunteers. For example, in 2022, I, and I'm referring to the chair, uh, found myself with no traffic control experience directing traffic in and out of the community center while Highway 20 remained open during the float arrivals. It was chaotic to say the least and hazardous, if I may add. That's not in here, but I'm just adding that there. Additionally, um, while we appreciate the work officers do, this has been the second year in a row where the support provided by the Niagara Regional Police was not overly effective. However, how are we to know until the day of the event is upon us? Sorry, just make, sh make sure I'm reading this correctly. Yeah. Unfortunately, hiring both NRP and traffic control was not the possibility due to the financial restraints or constraints. Sorry. Uh, what is so? The question here is: What is the liability if I had to, if I had been hurt? Um, is there something the township staff and council have considered in the past? Things like collecting and organizing float entry insurance waivers uh, f falling to volunteers. What if something is missed? What is the liability as a committee of council? Would, the ultimate, would this ultimately fall back on the township? Is there, is there a perceived level of risk we are not considering after all of these years? All to say, the support we received from our township liaison and township council liaison was wonderful and we cannot thank them enough. However, my concerns lie with senior management staff and their awareness of the liability for the township assumes through volunteers as well as their and council's commitment to the success of the event. Um, as previously mentioned, neighboring communities provide further support to ensure a successful event. For example, in Grimsby, much of the planning and organizing is dependent on the township and the fundraising and day of activities involving the volunteers. Thorold recently hired a special events coordinator and assumed a large portion of their annual parade and also to assist with events like the farmer's market and other holiday events, uh, for example, Canada Day, that were traditionally run by volunteers. Lastly, the Town of Pelham includes their Santa Claus Parade in their special events and festivals operating budget to ensure the event's a success. Therefore, I truly believe the longevity and continued success of the parade that staff and council should consider their involvement in the future. Almost there. I know I don't need to explain the importance of bringing the community together to the people around the tables in this room and is more important now than it has ever been um, with what has, uh, we've all endured during the pandemic. Uh, doing this for the children and those who enjoy it is very important to the committee and I hope we can explore different themes and events to ensure an inclusive and fun filled event in the future no matter how it is celebrated by an individual but to focus on the community as a whole i'm exploring how to highlight different ways the community members celebrate on social media and website as well as considering a future theme of christmas around the world and then lastly we're just rounding this up here as you can see i'm, un I'm unfortunately not there to speak uh, with you all directly as a busy mother of two young children a full-time senior advisor for the federal public service as much as i'm committed to my community. I'm also committed to my family, friends, and career, and therefore hope you can understand my absence at tonight's meeting. If you have any remaining questions or concerns, please contact me directly. I look forward to seeing you on the 2023 parade and would like to thank you again for your time, consideration, and support. Sincerely, Nicole Shime, committee chair. So that is just to be read in the record there, and I will save any comments or questions I have for when we get to that part of the item on the agenda there. It's off? Yeah, now it's on. Sorry. It's on. Members of committee, um, I seen your hands being waved through while he was reading it. Can it wait till we, re I guess it can't? But well, this is not even an item on I the know. table. That's, so it's just, it's just a record into the record. So there's like someone standing speaking. Counselor, counselor, hold on. I'll, I'll speak to it, to him. There is an item on the agenda when we re in regards to it, so save your comments for then, okay? Thank you. Yeah, okay. This, this to me, this, this to you. Well, that's how they asked me to read it because they couldn't be here tonight. Councillor Chichuk? 
I just, uh, I, I know we'll discuss it later, but is it possible that we could all just get a copy of that? It was a rather arduous discussion point, and I'm trying to fathom, and I see my colleagues are struggling with what the intent okay. was. So, I know we did receive it per email. I did, I did see it per email. I think I, some of us did. I don't know if all members of committee committee did well, he so sent it to the, the chair vice chair mayor clerk okay sorry I didn't see I didn't I look at the list terrible. okay so, could so we yes maybe just send it around so that we have it completely I I just yeah. I didn't have it but uh, yeah, I absolutely. did see that there was this difficulty there's a lot in that report that was, was making would, for a struggle would you like a hard copy council I would love one please okay uh, madam CAO or madam clerk can we get someone to give a hard copy prior to we can get to that item well, on the agenda well we do get Something that comes into you or to the mayor or to the CAO goes to all of us. So I think out of courtesy, we should all have a card copy as we deliberate further into the agenda, if that could be. I didn't see the list of people they were sent to. I just received. Oh, okay. So in the future, we can uh, make sure we... Uh, if we can get everybody on that list. The letter, just to let you know, Mr. Chair, it really just came in uh, later this afternoon, and that's why I forwarded it to you, the Vice Chair, and the, um, the clerks, just to ensure that it could be right into the record. So um, as far okay. as sending it to all accounts, I just kind of left that at the discretion of the clerks and the CAO. Um, just that normally it would be no different than someone coming up and presenting. They're just unable to be here I, I think we can. I think we can park this right now. We can have this discussion when the item comes on the agenda further down. We'll have a nice, fulsome discussion on, on how it all came to be. There's, oh, I said it. There it is. You're right. I did. You did a couple times earlier tonight, too. Really? Yeah. It just rolls off the tongue. The word fulsome. Wow. Fulsome. Somebody, so somebody out there said that the very time I say the word fulsome, they're having a drink because we say we say it too much. No, but the public has said it to us. We've heard we say it, we say it too much. West Lincoln drinking game. Yeah, so there's apparently a... West Lincoln drinking game? Anyways, Are yeah. Are we in on it? No. Oh, no, okay. we're not allowed. We don't want to be in on it. <laughs> Meetings would never end. Anyways, moving on, counselors. There's nothing in... Con so, sorry, let me just get my space back here again. Uh, consent agenda items. Uh, item A2523, Consent Agenda Items, recommendation that the Administration Fire Finance Committee hereby approves the following consent agenda items. One, two, be hereby received for information with the exception of Mayor of the Youth Advisory Committee, uh, minutes of March 1st, 2023, and Information Report WFLD0623, a monthly update March 2023. Anybody want to pull anything? No, no. I wanted to make a motion. Oh, you want to move the motion? Oh, okay. So I got it. Move. I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, Councilor Chichuk, Mayor Ganan, all those in favor? We can. Yes. Your, so your, your screen will pop up soon for your pleasure in the motion. Pretty much. Actually, just before we do vote, I know we're supposed to pull it, but Tim, you're here. We haven't seen you in a bit. You know, maybe I, we can, you come to these meetings and, you know, I, I, no one really asked so many questions, but I have a question. How is, how is Fire Station 2 doing? How are, where are we at with that? Sorry for ruining the consent, but this is just the area I can least ask it because that's no to do with fire. No problem. Um, Thanks for your question, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, station two is coming along very nicely. Um, the uh, expected um, completion date is approaching. We're hoping to be in the building end of May, beginning of June, hopefully. So currently, um, the floor is poured in the bays. Uh, work is being done to put the ceiling up in the bays. The uh, drywall work is completed inside the uh, administrative side. Uh, paint is in so um, there was a delay in the siding the metal siding that was going around the east side and then on the north side and a little bit on the south side um, there was uh, an issue with the product so some of that had to be stripped off and it was replaced uh, at no cost to the municipality 
um, with actually a better product. So um, the contractor really uh, stood up and, and took care of it for us. So our project manager and uh, supervisor on site are excellent. They are really advocating for us. So um, they, they made sure that uh, things were taken care of well in that respect, but in just keeping the project moving as well. So um, yeah, very pleased with the way things have been going there. Um, we are basically on schedule and on budget. So yeah, happy with how things are going. So just to give uh, a curiosity, will there be an open house for us to come see once that's completed members of council and staff or yeah absolutely uh, our intention is that um, once we are able to take occupancy of the building we will have uh, a grand opening schedule excellent and uh, further to that I think probably a little little later in the year we may have a full open house as excellent. well to the public so that we can uh, you know have everyone come and, and check out our new facility that's that's good news mm -hmm. Okay, sorry I went out of a little bit of routine there. I just, I, I, instead of me pulling the item, so please apologize on my, uh, uh, my manner. So the, the motion's in front of you, members of committee, if you can uh, s vote on the motion. Thank you. Thanks for that, Tim. Sorry for putting you on the spot there, Tim. Okay. Then the numbers are up there for it. Okay, moving on to communications. Uh, item A26-23, uh, resignation of the Heritage Committee, the recommendation that an email from Al McLaren dated March 31st, 2023, advising his resignation of the Township of the West Lincoln Heritage Committee be accepted with regrets, uh, and that the bylaw removing Mr. McLaren from the membership of the Heritage Committee be presented at the April 24th, 2023 Council meeting. I need a mover for that. Council Riley, seconded by Councillor Bradrick. Any comments or questions on the recommendation? Seeing none. Madam. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Chichuk. Uh, we do have the authority. We do have uh, authority to to uh, appoint people within the term, I believe, from those that might have applied, or we also have to go out and advertise. Should we not be giving direction on what we should be doing to fill any vacancies? That's a good question, Councillor Chichuk. I'll refer to the clerk. Thank, clerk. thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in response to Councillor um, Chichok's question through you, Mr. Chair, um, yes, at any time we could um, send out uh, advertisement again if Council so wishes to direct staff to do so. Um, we can also always have it on the Township's website um, at any point, and it could just be um, pushed out as well on social media, or we could do a combination of all three. So I would take any and all of those opportunities if we asked, if we gave direction that we pursue uh, candidates for the Heritage Committee to be solicited through our social media website and uh, if, if uh, we don't get sufficient application or take up that we then advertise the position available. It's just that we sometimes lose these people and it's very valuable to have a full contingent <clears throat> on some of these committees to get a, an understanding uh, from a broader perspective, so it would be it would be a shame for us not to fill it so early in the term. So whatever we would want to do, and I'd leave it with staff if we don't want to give. Absolute would you direction. Would you like to make an amendment to this recommendation, recommendation, uh, Councilor Chief? I would like to see it as a as a friendly amendment with a point three that just said, and that the town should pursue alternatives uh, uh, methods of recruiting additional members for the Heritage Committee to fill vacancies. Um, through social media, our website, uh, or other me other means as appropriate. Okay. Before we uh, get a seconder on that amendment, uh, Council Chichik, so we can go to other members of Council for comment, or would you like to see a seconder? Uh, well, just to put it on the table, put it so on the table. talking to the full amend full motions. Okay. I see. I second it. I don't have a problem. With oh, you're seconding? Or I, you have I a can comment? second that. I still have a comment, but I don't have a problem with that. I just. I know your hand was going up like constant, and I wasn't always sure seeing I seeing you. Right, I'm looking right at her. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Riley. All right. Um, uh, to echo that uh, in, in some capacity, I guess I, some of the one of the questions I have first, I have a couple questions, but the first one is, do we have any idea how many people were appointed to this board, and what does this um, 
uh, this situation, how many, like, is this only one person or five people that got appointed to this board and we're only missing one? Or is this like one person who applied to this board and now we have no representation? So I was wondering if we had a, an answer to that. So through okay. maybe to the, I'll refer to put her on it, maybe the clerk? Did you, Sorry. Did you wanted to repeat it while you were, I know you were typing something. Maybe you might have to repeat okay, that. Okay, that's fine. Around. I um, I'm just I have to go and uh, look at the bylaw that was adopted in early t uh, in January this year at the uh, council meeting in January. So if you just bear with me for a Is moment, I probably can uh, find that uh, through uh, chair. I believe there's six of us, including um, the gentleman that is going to be uh, has sent his regrets. So there's six outstanding counselors. There's still there's, there's five now. Including okay, there's five. Myself. Okay. So my my follow up question is if maybe before the st town staff spend any money or resource, could we whatever goes out there, whether it's social media or eventually the newspaper, could we also review all the other boards that have vacancies so that we're making sure that this is kind of dealt with, and maybe we make a friendly amendment to the friendly amendment, um, but it's not just specifically to the heritage committee because I do recall other boards not having their max quota of numbers that needed. It. So that would be my only uh, request to that. So. Okay, so I see the clerk is typing something up there. So, okay. Well, but otherwise, I yeah, think that's a great idea. Park that at the moment. Uh, anybody else? I saw somebody else's hand on this side, or it's kind of went up and down, or nothing? Okay. Uh, so I'll let the uh, clerk read the amendment that she's written up when she's completed it, and then I'll need a seconder on the amendment if it, if it, uh, if it meets the consensus of council. And she'll read it out once she's completed. And it was moved by Councillor Chichuk, and then I think it's fitting that we'll have a, because you added to it, we'll have yes. Councillor Riley second that motion. Go ahead, Madam Thank Clerk. Um, I just I haven't really read it back, so please bear with me again. The the third uh, recommendation would read that staff be directed to advertise the vacancy uh, on the Heritage Committee on the township's website, social media, and through newspaper advertisement as council feel is a, as staff feel is appropriate, as well as any other committees or boards that do not have a full membership complement. Is that? Satisfying to the I think two the clerk has the essence of what's in there. She may want to revise some of the wording, but I would say that that is appropriate, and uh, she'll revise it after this appropriately anyway. Okay. So I would say that that rewriting of the intent of what it was I was trying to do is appropriate, and I will still move that motion. Excellent. And Councilor Riley, okay, seconding it with the way it's amended. Members of committee, any comments or questions on it? Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, ju just to committee, the, there are some committees, such as the Youth Advisory Committee, that is still looking for people. But we, we sort of have an appropriate way to do that. So I don't, want, I don't want staff especially to think that they suddenly have to put a newspaper advertisement. The kids are doing a great job finding friends and, and kids that they know. And so we've doubled in number and, and hope to you know, continue to add. And the Age-Friendly Advisory Committee as well, um, has had a couple of people come back. So those names have not yet come to council for approval, but they will as the minutes come through. And so um, some of our committees that were low, the two that I'm involved with in particular, that were low to start with, are sort of in their natural growing pattern anyway. So I just, uh, I just want people to be aware of that. I want the public to be aware. I want council members to be aware that um, we're working on that. Great, thank you for your comments, Madam Mayor. Okay, seeing no uh, other Questions? The motion will be in front of you. And your pleasure on the motion. Waiting on you, Councillor. I believe so.
didn't come with instructions, I guess. Item A27-23, and that carries, thank you. Item A27-23, Administrative Assistant Justin Palev and Director of Le uh, Legislative Services and Clerks, Joanne Shime. Uh, recommendation report C03-2023, Sunday Gun Hunting. The recommendation that the report C03-2023, dated April 17, 2023, regarding Sunday Gun Hunting be received and a Sunday Gun Hunting in the Township of West Lincoln be permitted with guidelines of the Township of West Lincoln regulation of the discharge of guns or other firearms by law, and that the Township of West Lincoln advised the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry to add the Township to its list and map of Southern Ontario municipalities that permit Sunday gun hunting, which is updated by the province every April 1st and September 1st. So I need a mover for that. Council Riley, seconded by Council Bradrick. Comments or questions? Council Bradrick. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a comment or two. Um, I'm hoping that we as a committee can uh, pass this tonight. Um, I think our world has uh, evolved over the last, you know, generation that uh, things are seven days a week. Uh, the exclusion of any activity on a particular day of a week being Sunday um, may have a, um, a base in in a Christian type of heritage, but I think our world, world is seven days a week. Living in the rural uh, community for over 25 years, I could probably count on maybe two hands the amount of time I've ever heard a gun shoot uh, off within my um, ability to hear it on my property. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that uh, we can um, vote on this and accept it tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Bradrick. Councillor Riley. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I'm going to echo uh, the councillor's comments there. Um, as far as adding uh, a couple of my own, I think you know our community uh, is catching up in its modernization of many different things, not just in how the township operates, but just in how our community is now getting a little bit more consistent with other neighboring communities. This is not the only community in Niagara, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, um, but I believe there's like seven or eight, other, if not nine, other communities in Niagara that have this. So I think this is probably long overdue, and you know reality is even if you were to sub not support this there's still people doing it illegally this is allowing uh, responsible gun owners who are hunters uh, to do it legally and compliant with the rules within that we have and if we recall we had a gentleman from actually my ward who had come forward to make a presentation to council asking for this so I want to thank staff for the promptness and the the, the speed of getting this back to council I wasn't sure when this come back if I'm not mistaken I think it was February ish is that correct okay so I think this is some um, record speed to see and I, I, I certainly will be supporting this tonight thank you thank you uh, Councillor Riley Councillor Rayner Thank you. Uh, Councillor Riley mentioned that he had somebody from his ward approach to do this. Councillor Riley is mostly an urban ward, so he was asking for permission to go into a rural ward to do some shooting because he can't do it in a subdivision. Um, actually, so, I want to correct that. I actually have rural in my ward, so yeah, that's but a not misrepresentation. Councillor, Councillor, Councillor. Okay, uh, so I'm going to call point of order. Okay, okay, call me on point of order, okay, but I said what I Hold on one on. second, both of you. Okay, Councillor. Both of you, so you guys shouldn't be obviously going back and forth. Please, through the chair, yes, you Mr. will be chair. able to correct yourself at any given time to correct yourself. I will give you the floor back, okay. Councillor. Councillor Rayner. Um, Councillor Riley also mentioned that the illegal ones are shooting anyways on Sunday. Now they'll be able to shoot on Sunday. So we're doing this to make the illegal ones legal, which is not really the good way to go about it. If somebody's doing something bad, you don't change the laws so that the bad guy wins. But anyways, um, the next thing is through the chair to the CAO. Um, do we have a number of grants or um, rapport with with your um, connections with the federal government? Um, any any anything that we deal a lot that we need to keep the rapport with the federal government? Madam CAO. Thank you for the question through you, Chair, to Councillor uh, Rayner. I don't completely understand your question. Um, well, my, my question deals with the fact that the, the relationships that we have to the region, to the province, to the federal government um, is, is also to our benefit to keep on a good working relationship with them. And that's basically what I was trying to say. Um, 
Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you for the, to you, to um, Councillor Rayner, uh, to understand your um, your question, which is I think is to just continue to work with our, our neighboring um, other levels of government and 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 coordination on different efforts. Yes, I do have a good report. I, I don't, I, what I really was confused about was the relationship to the Sunday gun hunting. Is that, was that something I missed? I, I'm alluding to that, but okay. I had to get that first. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I wanted to basically say we try to keep on good terms with the different levels of government because that's a good way to enhance and work together in a positive way. Um, so now I can say what I really wanted to say which is the leader of our country does not like guns, banned pistols, is trying to ban long guns, and now we're going out of our way to allow them to use more guns in our area on days that we normally do not, would not sit well with them, I don't think, right now. So I, I'm thinking that in that direction, we're certainly not making positive moves if we wish, wish to keep a rapport with the federal government because our leader of the federal government really doesn't like anybody to have a gun. So that's okay. really what I'm saying there. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and through you. Uh, apologies again for not going through you originally. I will, I'll I'll I will come back that. to you. I'll, I'll always yes. allow a Councillor to, to defend their well, ward by all means, so I I'll always come back to you. The Councillor yeah. doesn't realize um, the misinformation he was spreading at the beginning there and the misrepresentation of his understanding of my award. So I just wanted to clarify that as quickly as possible. Um, again, I guess to, if we're going to focus on the report here, I'm not going to speak to the personal counselor's biasness towards or opinions of the our federal leader. Um, I think our federal leader and his actions speak for itself. Um, but when I look at what we have, if you look actually, if you actually read the report and you actually look at what's within the report here, this isn't something unique. This isn't something brand new. West Lincoln isn't inventing this concept of Sunday gun hunting. Um, if you look even just within the report itself and the areas it's highlighted, West Lincoln appears to be one of two, maybe three municipalities in all Niagara that doesn't have this currently. And and I get you know maybe the concern the councilor may have. You know you know I'm not too sure what his overall experience is with guns. I know some people are just scared about the idea idea of guns just in general. Um, and, and so I can get the unsettling thing. But the, the fact of the matter is, you, you're, you suggested that because there's some people doing it illegally, that we're creating a bylaw to make it legal. Instead, it's about basically ensuring that one, we're consistent with the other local area municipalities. But on top of that, we're allowing the good, responsible gun owners to be able to participate in a lawful manner. This has nothing to do with the ones who are bad and the ones who are doing it um, illegally. They're then going to do what they're going to do. And, and as a result, I think what we have here is a staff report that references everything that needed to be dealt with. Because if the report came back not to permit it, I would be supporting that as well. This came back as a thorough report from staff. They did the work. They did the research. And here we are tonight with this recommendation. So. Again, I don't, I, you know, just to kind of explain and clarify that misunderstanding and representation, this is not rewarding the bad guys as the councillor um, is, is phrasing it. This is, you know, about ensuring that, you know, our community continues to grow in a, in a modern way, at the same time also rewarding those who are good, responsible gun owners, um, and, and again, who have already been following the rules, continue to follow the rules, and they'll follow the rules under these policies and rules, and as things change in the future, should they change in the future, then the policy will probably be amended, and I would support it then too. Okay. Anybody else on this side? Any comments on anything? I know you have another comment, Councilor Rayner. I just don't want to go tit for tat. Yeah, thank you. The only reason I meant, mentioned the, the one about the illegal ones are now going to have an opportunity to work legally is because Council Riley was the one who brought that up. I didn't even think of that, but, but basically what it means is the ones who are doing it legally on Sunday now can do it legally on Sunday, so we're catering to them. That's my interpretation of it. I didn't make it up. You're the one who said it, and it just falls in line to me that we're falling for what they want us to do. I'm, the, I'm one of the councillors who live way out in the rurals that could be affected by this. And uh, we already have, as I mentioned before, South Chippewa Skeet Range. Uh, they shoot on Sunday and they shoot on Wednesdays. So we already have it out there in a sense. And if this gentleman that approached you in your ward wanted to go do some, do some shooting, you could also have some fun with your son taking him out to the Skeet Range. And you can go in a place that's been licensed for years and years without going through the fields chasing animals on a Sunday. Um, that's just my thoughts. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Chichuk. Mr. Chair, can we call the question? 
Okay, so we've got uh, counselor requesting to call the questions. So, um, Madam Clerk. And that's carried. We're moving on to the. It's done. No, not Dr. Wilkinson. Put the item on the table. Should I ask that during this time? No, it's good enough. Okay, people, today, tonight, okay, Councillor Rayner. <laughs> okay, I know there's a lot on, we still got a lot more on the agenda. Councillor Rayner, what does, you can go ahead and what does it have to pertain to? Okay. Moving ahead. Item A28 23, Treasurer, Director of Finance, Donna D. Philippus, Recommendation Report T09 2023 2023 Community Sponsorships and Cemetery and Hall Board Grants. The recommendation that report T09 2023 regarding 2023 Community Sponsorship Cemetery and Hall Board Grants dated April 17, 2023 be received and that the Community Sponsorship and Cemetery and Hall Board Grants for 2023 as recommend, recommended in this report be approved. I need a mover for that. Madam Mayor, seconded by Councillor Bell. Comments or questions? Councillor Bell. <clears throat> the uh, Santa Claus Parade, I know what the ask is and I know what the recommended grant is. Uh, I'd like to see them get the full request of the $7,500. That is the one thing that we have in our communities all three, Kester, Wildport, and Smithville, that all residents of West Lincoln take part in. And to sell them short uh, would be an injustice. I, I think that they fully deserve the $7,500. It's a very small ask for what goes into it. It's all volunteer work that goes into it. The costs are more than justified for what they're putting out. And I, I just don't believe that a member in the community would begrudge them getting that full grant to put this parade on. So, so, I, so I'd like to recommend that they get the full grant, not just the 5000 Okay. Do you want a motion for that, Council, or do you want some clear? Why don't we go for some clarification how the, how finance, dire the finance director broke, did the breakdown for this, and maybe that can help sure. first? Uh, Director of Finance. Uh, through you, Chairman Trombetta, to Councillor Bell, thank you for the uh, question and the opportunity to speak. Um, so you can see that the allocation to the Santa Claus Parade has been increased this year as a result of their increased ask. Um, I, I was not able to allocate the full amount of the grant because I um, keep within the budget amount of the account so council has an option if if they do want to give the full amount of the grant uh, either the account would go over budget or you can you could take funds from another association and allocate it towards the santa claus parade so just to clarify in allocating these funds i always look to see what the uh, budget is and i try well i do stay within that budget amount thank you did that help but all, Councillor Bell, I, I'm not it, saying. It, yes, it does, but I'm not sure how you can shuffle the funds around. But I do believe that their request deserves the full 7,500. Okay. Because so. it's it's an event that all of West Lincoln takes part in. Okay, so we'll we'll hold that thought right now, Councillor Bell, and I'll come back to you and see how many if we can if we're able to work something out and see what other ideas the members of the committee have at uh, this time. Councillor Riley. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and and through you, um, I'll, I'll second that motion if the council wishes to bring that motion forward. I, I don't think at this point we should necessarily be going through and and and, and taking from one and give to the other. I'd be asking that maybe through you to our director of finance. The $2,500 in the grand scheme of things and what we deal with on a day-to-day, -day, like it, it seems like um, 
a very insignificant amount of money. And so my question to you, Mr. Chair, is, is this something that we could pull from reserve this year, review the overall grant program at next year's budget meeting and look at what needs to be um, included? Because when you look at the request this year, it was around 39,000 last year. This year's gone up 66,000 in, in, in rounding figures there. And, and so there's obviously a lot of organizations that are struggling and hurting and I'd hate to take from one to give to another after staff's already gone through this. But I would also like to see this particular committee made whole so that they can do what they did uh, to the same quality and capacity and it is a committee of council this is not a private organization and, and so um, I guess again just to finish my question there I'm just trying to figure out if this is something we can pull let's say from a contingency reserve I can throw that out there the directors probably got a better idea or plan for it and then as we go into next year's budget maybe we look at how the grant program is working and where it needs to be more effective to make sure that these services and programs are getting a little bit more of what they need Director of Finance. Uh, through you, uh, Chairman Trebetta to Councillor Riley. My recommendation is if Council wishes to um, award the full amount of the grant, uh, that the account just be allowed to go over budget. Um, more than likely, there'll be savings from other operating um, budget lines. For instance, office supplies might come in under budget. Advertising might come under budget. That would offset that. Later in the year, if there is an issue, I will alert council, and we may need to do a budget amendment. Okay. Perfect. So I would still second that the councillor wishes to bring that forward. Would any other members of council like to speak? Councillor Broderick? Thank you, Chair. Uh, through you to the CAO, um, the letter that uh, Ms. Shime had sent to us um, also talked a, um, a bit about uh, the support of um, the staff in the, op uh, I guess, the operations of the parade and how it's done in other communities. Um, so could you or perhaps the Director of, uh, of uh, Public Works could uh, highlight what the connection is um, with our staff and the Santa Claus Parade, and if there is any consideration of what it could be offered to this parade committee. Um, when I think about the amount of our community members that do attend our uh, Santa Claus Parade, um, it certainly outnumbers many of the other events that are solely um, taken on by the rec department and uh, would certainly, in my mind, justify a closer connection with our staff and, uh, and the delivery of such an important event for our community. Director? Sure. Uh, through to Chair to Councillor Bradrick. Um, we do have a staff, uh, a staff position that acts as a staff liaison. Um, I, I'd like to say that I believe our staff participated a lot more with this committee than in previous years. So our staff liaison uh, person helped train them and teach them about insurance and uh, what to collect from the float entries and stuff like that. Uh, also, our public works staff uh, participated a great deal during the day of the event, and they helped with uh, the road closures and stuff. Um, I think the idea was to have the, uh, the police officers at the high-risk areas for the road closures, and then our operations staff took care of the medium risk, and yeah, some of the volunteers did have to help out with the road closures, but we tried to make sure that they're at the low-risk areas. Um, so, you know, we could definitely... Uh, make better connections with the committee, um, maybe even present um, something in the 2024 budget where uh, we have a different model on how we work with the, the parade committee. So I guess, uh, thank you very much, uh, Director. So through uh, Chair, um, if perhaps maybe part of this uh, recommendation could also be, oh, I see the CIO, did you, sorry, go ahead. And I, I th thank you, and through you, um, Chair Trimbetta, to um, Councillor Braderick, and in, in addition to what Director DePaulo talked about, um, your other part of the question was how do we compare to other municipalities, and um, they have different organizational setups and different or operational responsibilities. So some have identified events coordinator positions. I think Grimsby just announced one this year. Um, it's something we'd certainly look forward to in the future when we look at all the other um, needs of, of the operations as well. But it, I, I can attest to the fact that our staff worked very closely and very differently than, um, than with the former committee because they, they had a different um, protocol. 
and we actually changed the parade route last year so that was another thing that I think there'll be a little few few less bugs hopefully this year as they they figure out the safety issues and we move forward so thank you for letting me add that on okay thank you thank you I had Councillor Bell and then I have Councillor Chichuk uh, <clears throat> this the the ask to increase was no reflection on the staff. They, they, they do a wonderful job working in so many events that we put on throughout the year. And the Santa Claus Parade is probably one of the bigger ones that we do. And yes, staff does get involved in it and they get involved quite heavily. Uh, the, the intent here is to give them the money they need to do what they can without making the parade less because sometimes you don't have the funds so you have to cut back. It's a small ask, $2,500. Moving forward and, and you know, getting ready for next year's parade for 24, uh, I'd like to see the township take on a bigger role in the Santa Claus parade. Right now we have a very small minuscule role in it and we rely so heavily on volunteers and I'm very thankful for all the volunteers that come forward to do this job. But I think moving forward, if we could get the township to take a little bit bigger role in this, it would definitely help for sure. And I think that the committee of the Santa Claus Parade, we have a good committee. I think there that's gonna be more than willing to work with staff and hopefully staff would feel the same way to work with them and we can put on a bigger and better parade everybody works together and that's that's my ask is really just the $7,500 request and hopefully the township uh, council will see fit to ask that we request that the township staff work with the parade and the township itself works with everybody to make this a, a better parade for everyone so Table. yeah okay yeah for sure councillor chichuk thank you Councilor. am i uh, remiss and did the mayor actually ha have her hand up no, i was told that I she did uh, no i had okay. i saw councillor bells before i saw yours so okay. i'll go to you next and then I'm, i'll go to the mayor i'm fine i just uh want to ensure that everyone has the uh time to speak and speaks in the time they're given <clears throat> am i not uh, giving people time tonight no, you're doing a wonderful job. Um, I think that I am looking at this letter that thank you very much for giving a copy of it to me. And I understand the role of volunteers. And I understand our grants, I think. Uh, and I feel that the consensus around the table is talking about getting an operating budget for, for the Santa Parade that might be outside the grant situation because it's really, it really is a hybrid of this, the, the townships desire to have an event that is very successful along with all of our Christmas preparations with the tree lighting and skating and all the things that happen in this township I think that would be most appropriate because it wouldn't be taking from one to give to another when this is such an important event so I understand that the treasurer feels that there's no need to go to reserve so early in the year and that we could look for savings and surpluses as the year goes on and that's why we have a treasurer we give the treasurer the authority to go to other accounts as she sees fit this early in the year and come back with a report. My, my wish would be that if we were going to go forward, we would ask for a, a separate and distinct category, much like other municipalities, to have an events coordinator or to have an event budget and that it be completely devoid of any kind of uh, allocation of grants to other groups and that it be talked about separately because it is so unique. And we don't want our, our volunteers to feel in any way, <coughs> pardon me, at risk. And if there's a role for us to look at additional people in our budget, this council needs to remember that they're asking for FTEs and we, we are doing that mid-year to the CAO's uh, uh, point. And that uh, if we're asking for that, that we support it at, at budget. But nothing we're asking for is untoward except that we need to do it in the appropriate way, which is to probably remove it from grants because it's more like a special event. And we, if there's going to be coordinators and roles for staff, we should be looking at it as a separate budget 
that all of our that all of the expense related to it, whether it's staff time or a new person or expense expenditures by the town go to and that we hold our staff accountable, not our volunteers, for how it is spent. Thank you, Councillor. Madam Mayor, you are right, because you let Shelley go first, and then you lost your spot, and yeah. I didn't come back to you. So I that's did. my fault. And I, lost I, I lost my place in the queue, but that's Yeah, okay. that's my fault, and I want to apologize for that, because you did let her go first, and then I skipped over, and I, I went to, to <laughs> Councillor Bell. So, uh, so again, please uh, take my apology. I, I did miss you, Madam Mayor. Accepted. No Thank problem. you. Thank you. And in actual fact, it was just as well that Councillor Chichok went first because um, I I'd almost say ditto to her remarks in terms of what we were, we were talking about. The only thing I would like to just say, in addition to that, if we're going to look at this differently moving forward, then it has to be a totally different look. So I do agree with that. And, and I think we'll let Councillor Chichok's words stand alone. Um, I do want to say to this year's committee, though, whether, they, whether this goes through and they get their $7,500 or not, I, I mean, we went last year to see the public skating afterwards, and it was wonderful that there was carol singing from the United Church. It became more of a community event. But I do think that we have to give the this year's committee permission to step back from that if necessary this year. So I, I think that it was a great addition. They were able to do it last year, but we don't, I don't want them in this year of increased costs and trying to um, put together a really good parade to think that those add-ons are necessary to the parade. So I think if you were to carry that message, Councillor, as their liaison person, um, I think that should be loud and clear in that it's, you know, doing it one year doesn't mean that's an expectation forever. And, um, you know, if there's a savings to be found in those small things that they cut back on, that that's the direction that I think that they should feel free to go this year. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councillor Riley. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll just go through back to the mayor there. Absolutely, I'll relay that message here. I think you, you got to remember when this com uh, committee came in um, last term, you know, some carried over to this term, uh, they didn't really get an opportunity to do the parade right away. The pandemic kind of hit shortly as they were uh, appointed. And so they've always been doing a little bit extra. And, and so as they did the, 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 what do you call it, the West Lincoln Sparkles and the coloring contest, and then there's the skating. So as they were trying to do some of this stuff, they're trying to keep a little bit of that feedback that they heard from residents that they wanted to keep going. But knowing that we're seeing more of the public skate, I can certainly uh, relay that message as far as one less thing that we have to allocate resources to. But as you, you see here, cost of everything Thing is just skyrocketed and and so even just bands that we would have got before for a, for a fraction of what they're asking now uh, it's like can we even get any of these you know the grant itself almost barely covers a, a few of those plus all the extra sponsorship that's going to be required and not knowing what that future looks like and so back to you mr. chair to Councilor Chichuk, I fully agree with what she's suggesting there and in fact I think this is a great opportunity where we're gonna have staff be able to review what role that they're going to take in the future because if you you kind of read between the lines here and you know the thing I've also mentioned to some members of council as well is the the core of what's happened here with the parade is that it essentially needs some more staff involvement and I think what I guess what I'm trying to say there is this is not something that we should be completely dependent on the volunteers it's a big it's a big undertake it's a big amount of responsibilities whether we use our recreational coordinator or if we have to eventually bring somebody else on who also assists and we have the farmers market and everything else and there's a splitting of hats and jobs between staff members but you know at some point you know we might not have these volunteers because the job itself is more than what an average volunteer would be expected to uh, deal with uh, especially at this capacity so again I would totally support that idea going into next year's budget I think today we don't need to make it complicated um, I don't I still don't think we have the item on the t on the floor here so I'm gonna be uh, a little proactive here and ask confirm with the council that he still wants to put it on the floor so then if we can just put it on the floor and I'll be a seconder um, and then we can if there's any more conversation to have but I guess the the item we're putting on the floor is that um, that they receive the additional twenty five hundred dollars I'm not too sure how we rephrase this so I'll refer to you through you mr. chair to the clerk if she can pre uh, prepare or suggest um, a resolution that council can debate and vote on this okay. evening, that would make them whole from their request. While she's putting that together, I have Councillor Chichuk. I have no no problem with that motion, but uh, whether the councillors put this on or take it as a friendly amendment, and that the discussion around the council table, this uh, committee table this evening. Uh, be sent to staff for consideration to come back with a report on how best to serve a future Santa Claus parades by staff 
direction and greater involvement with the planning and the delivery of the Santa Claus Parade. That's perfect. Thank you for putting that on there. So you can make it your second part of your resolution? If we could, I would second that as well. So okay, so I'm just gonna, gonna if you might have to repeat that <gasps> statement if I'm you can. Smart once a day. She's working on the other one, so I'm just good in time, so. Just give her a second. Good start. <laughs> that staff be directed to. And that staff be directed to take oh the the sentiments that have been expressed at the committee uh, this evening and as direction and come back with a plan for further involvement of staff cost and and resources to play a greater role in the Santa Claus parade and festivities Madam Mayor so so further to that you had a, another point that was very important through you, Mr. Chair, to the councillor, where you talked about involvement in the planning. Oh. So, so I think, so, yeah. So I think where you were going the first time was getting staff involved a little sooner than the actual day of the parade, kind of thing. Oh, other absolutely. Than, other than the single staff member who's been part of that. So no, no, absolutely. It, it, so it is if there right is a the way to do that in any way moving forward. Yes, and if you listen to the tape, you'll probably get it better, uh, Madam Clerk. But but the whole thing is to virtually move this to a a staff directed and and volunteer supported environment rather than vice versa, where there's insecurity on the costs being absorbed and the roles that everyone plays. So that's really where I was heading. <clears throat> Councillor Bell, your microphone, your microphone. Was it not said to make it a budget item in the budget the following? That was with the first one, yes, budget. was that we make it a budget item rather than, in fact, include it in the yeah, uh, current the situation, which is and the allocation of grants. Good. Madam CAO. Um, if you can just let me talk a little bit about the strategic planning exercise that is coming up as well, which... Go ahead. Madam go ahead. One moment, I have to regroup. Okay. Um, I think that this will be a good discussion during that, that process as well. So if you, you can add these motions and um, amendments, but I think that looking at the future needs will be something that... Um, will would likely logically come up during this process as well. So don't forget about that. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Chair. Yes. Thank you. Through you, um, this the okay. The resolution would read that the Director of Finance Treasurer's re recommendation report T09-2023 <coughs> be amended to increase the West Lincoln Santa Claus Parades Community Grant from five thousand dollars to seventy-five hundred dollars, and that staff be directed to report back on a plan for further involvement of staff and resources in the planning and execution of the Santa Cl West Lincoln Santa Claus Parade event, and to continually to con and continually worked and continue to work with the parade committee or something like that. Okay. Madam Mayor, you want to add something to that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just, I'm just concerned that that sounds like we want that immediately, whereas I think that was sort of part of our future, right? Well, let's report back. So, I don't know. so report back um, closer to next year's budget session or whatever, because I think I think the fact that we are going to talk about this during during our strategic planning is important. We don't have a lot of extra staff now to just add into that. Like we don't we don't have somebody sitting around that can just suddenly become part of that. So so we want we want to capture it and we want to acknowledge that it's important moving forward with the reality that. You know, this might not be the parade year where that happens as much as we wish. Does that? 
So yeah. however you can do that <laughs> with your magic, Madam Clerk. Give, give the clerk a second to write it and maybe it might, hold on. I have Councillor Riley put his hand up for, oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Director DePaula, go ahead. Uh, through the chair to address uh, American Ann's uh, comments. I, I think if we do present a report, whatever we present will make a recommendation that it be considered as part of the 2024 budget process. So we'll present the plan so you guys at least see a preview of it and then um, the report would say, you know, that we would present that as part of the 2024 budget consideration, okay. something so to that extent. So through you, thank you for that clarification because I, I thought this was getting mixed a little bit between what we're deciding to do for this year's parade with what our thoughts are about moving forward. And so that would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. I had Councillor Riley first, then I had you, Councillor Bell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was just going to actually pretty much mention what Councillor Ganea mentioned in terms of, I guess, seeking clarity that this was just going to come back as a generalized report so we understand what to be taken. So I can pass the floor over to Councillor Bell. Councillor Bell? Well, just to clarify, the only ask on the table and to be voted on was to increase the grant from five to 7,500. Everything else is to be put into a package for next year. And I agree with what's being said by Mr. DePaulo and, and Mayor Kadan that we bring that all back as a package and start working on that going forward for next year. So uh, I know that helps clarify it, but let's call the vote and move on. Once I get the clerk to read the, the motion that she's put together, then we'll uh, see what your uh, pleasure is on that uh, amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the committee. The, direct, um, the resolution would read, the amendment to the resolution would read that the Director of Finance slash Treasurer's Recommendation Report T09-2023 be amended to increase the Westland and Santa Claus Parade Committee's parade Parade's community grant from $5,000 to $7,500 and that staff be directed to report back in the fall of 2023 on a plan for further involvement of staff and resources as part of the budget for the planning and execution of the West Lincoln Santa Claus Parade event commencing in 2024 while continuing to work with the volunteers of the Parade Committee. Okay. Is that moved by Councillor Bell? Uh, yes, it is. It was Minutes. moved by... Uh, sorry, Councillor Bell and seconded by Councillor Riley. Okay. This is the amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any comments on the amendment? Anybody? Can Madam Mayor, okay. Uh, Let me open it up. Go ahead, open it up for voting. Councilor Rainer, just you. Do you want to ask him his pleasure on it? Do you want to ask him what his role is? Maybe not. I don't see the results. Yeah. And that's carried as amended. Um, no, we have to do the oh, original sorry. motion. The original motion. Yeah. And now the original motion's coming up. And this is the original motion. Yeah. And this is the original motion, members of the committee. And that carries. Okay, moving on. Other business. Uh, 
Item A2923, Madam CAO, you have employee professional accomplishments. Uh, go ahead. Yes, I um, want to congratulate Jennifer Bernard. She is our Coordinator of Engineering Services and Public Works on the completion of the um, Ontario Good Roads Association Stormwater Management Course. It's okay. a, a great accomplishment by one of our staff again. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on to item A30-23, and this is Councillor Expense Policy. So this uh, is on the table tonight for discussion. Um, this is supposed to be brought in May, and the members of uh, the, the Chair of Administration, Vice Chair, uh, in consultation with the Director of Finance, have brought this forward for this evening at this point. So I'm going to open up, and I'll start from my left to my right about this uh, policy so I don't miss anybody. So I'll start with Councillor Bell. <clears throat> so read this forward, uh, the Councillor expense policy. Uh, there's a few things that would like to see changed in the policy. Uh, the resolution I'm bringing forward is <clears throat> that... Uh, the Township of West Lincoln Council Expense Policy, POL-TO-2022, be amended as follows, that Section 11, Mobile Phones, Telecommunications Services, specifically items F and K, be amended by removing the wording relating to the reimbursement to a maximum, i.e. reimbursement, will be maximum $100 a month. Uh, that Section 3, uh, general requirements, specifically F and G, be amended to add the following sentence to the end of each of these items. This does not apply to the items purchased from the mayor's or the councilor's protocol account. And that Section uh, 9 be amended, specifically item B, be added to the following words, including computers and printers, following the words stationary and office supplies, and that section nine be amended specifically item C by removing not in the first sentence. So if you go through the items, okay. and you'll see it all in there. So this, this has been brought to the clerk's office. The clerk is aware of it. Does the members of council seen this or not? I don't believe don't so. Believe so. Would it be more fitting if members of council got a copy of this? I think it would be. I have a copy, so can we print this and get it to members of committee so they can I look? Can, uh, probably, I can email it quickly if everybody has email. Okay. Do you need a copy, a hard copy, Councillor Rayner? Yes. Uh, if we can get some copies, I think that'd be great. Thank you, Madam CEO. It's seven copies. It'll go quick. We can do it. Thank you, Madam CEO. I can speak to each of the items that to explain them. Sure. So the clerk is going to explain the items that Councillor Bell brought forward. So go ahead, Madam Clerk. If everybody can go to the uh, policy, the original policy that was a part, sorry. If everybody can go to the policy that was in the agenda. Uh, it was pages, sorry. Pages, yeah, 64 to 69. And it, uh, starting with the first resolution, which spoke to Section 11, the mobile phones and telecommunication services. So items F and K, so that's found on page 68 of the agenda. It's um, in F, it says a reimbursement will be a maximum of $100. That's for um, mobile phones. So that is what Councillor um, uh, Bell is suggesting be removed, the maximum amount of $100, as well as in K, which speaks to the internet services. Again, it says reimbursement will be to a maximum of $100 per month. That again would be removed from the uh, policy. The second item refers to section three, general requirements which is found on page 65 of the agenda. Um, and it's in more specifically items F and G. 
and he's adding at the very last of each of those sections this does not apply to any items purchased from the mayor mayor's or councillor's protocol account so it would read f would read any assets purchased using township funds remain the property of the township and must be returned to the township in the event that the individual is no longer a member of council this would uh, conclude by saying this does not apply to any items purchased from the mayor's or councillor's protocol account and again on item g goods purchased that have a useful life beyond the term of council shall become the property of the township and return to the township at the end of the term this again would include the sentence this does not apply to any items purchased from the mayor's or councillor's protocol account um, number three of councillor bell's um, amendment is that section nine be amended specifically item b which you will find on the very end of page 66 where it says stationery and office supplies the words computers and printers would be added as a um, on, onto that item. So it reads stationery and office supplies, in, uh, sorry, including computers and printers. Uh, the fourth amendment, again, deals with section nine, specifically item C, which is found towards the top of page 67. Uh, and the word not in the first sentence would be removed which would then read home office furniture is an eligible expense okay so i saw uh, councillor bell's amendment now that you've actually had it in front of you i need a seconder for that councillor rayner and now i will open it up for comments or questions i'll start I'll, I'll, i guess i was going to start from my left to my right so councillor roderick my comments are few. Um, when this was brought forward to us from um, the Director of Finance, I don't know, sometime last spring for us to take on in this term of council, I thought it was a very thorough um, policy and agreed with uh, all of the points that were uh, within this uh, policy as uh, in front of us. And uh, I think that uh, in this day and age of uh, um, working from home, uh, using online um, opportunities to review agendas, there's limited the, uh, need for expenses, uh, such as uh, stationery and printers, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think that there may be some members of council that do still wish to utilize uh, printing those things off uh, however I think that in this day and age that uh, that's the wave of the of now and the future that that is not an, uh, a necessary expense and I still stand by this policy I think it's thorough uh, certainly is way ahead of what was here prior to and uh, I'm hoping that it can stay as is thank you for those comments Councillor. I mean mayor Ganan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also support the policy um, w with the caveat, as I know um, I'm looking at, at the phone items. Um, first of all, uh, we are supplied with a computer, and, and so I don't see the need for computers or printers. Printers are relatively inexpensive, and I think if somebody wants to do that, as I do, print many of those things out myself so that I have them. I use my own printer and, and I'm quite prepared to keep on doing that. Um, I have had several discussions with you, Mr. Chair, and with other members of council about the issue of phones and being accessible if you travel. And so I think if there was a way to put some kind of a caveat in terms of um, making sure that that additional coverage could be included as part of a protocol account um, for somebody who is on vacation and still wishes to be um, have the residents be able to reach out to them and, and, and talk to them about whatever that situation is. Um, as long as that's done responsibly, then I, that's sort of the one change that I feel that I could support. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I just want to seek a little clarity here. I'm trying to go through the policy. Um, 
I, I see that we're in, under section nine. We're, um, would, or sorry, yeah, section nine. We, we could potentially be adding computers and printers. I just want to make sure, and I, I think it's probably um, a silly question to ask, but I'm going to still ask it anyways. Um, that section nine. Like, just trying to bring it up here. It's that I. No, so I guess I want to ask, so through you to the clerk, I just want to confirm, or maybe through our director of finance who's here tonight, um, who helped, I think, with some of this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, nothing, not, nothing could just be bought. So I'm going to use this because we talked about tonight. Someone couldn't just go and buy a firearm and expense it through the policy, correct? Because I think I want to make sure that the policy is still specific enough that it has the restraints that it needs, that like the ex protocol account just be, can't be used for anything. And so I just want to confirm uh, my understanding that um, if we're making any changes here, it's not opening this expense or this protocol account to be a slush fund of any capacity. Director of Finance, if you can, uh, <clears throat> yes, through you, Chairman um, Trombetta, to Councillor Riley. Um, at the beginning of the <clears throat> policy, it, it speaks that this policy is, is to ensure that. The expenses relate to, you know, your role as counselors. It's not to reimburse for personal expenses. And I think there's a line, um, can't see where it is, you know, what the public would expect a, uh, an elected official to spend their protocol on. If we were to get an expenditure that we, would, that we question, such as, as you mentioned, um, I would not allow it. Okay. And, and thank you. I just want to confirm because I get you know I'm not saying any member of council here would do that, but even looking down the road in future councils, I'll make sure we're not potentially opening ourselves up to have something that could be misinterpreted or misunderstood and used inappropriately. As as far as the, the concerns for computers and and printers, you know, I, I certainly have no real issue with that because I get um, you know the technology is changing. We learned through the pandemic we weren't just depending on these devices. In fact, you know, I've I've spoken how and, and you know how um, lack of how to put it politely, the, the, the technology we have is very, it's not cutting edge. Uh, I guess maybe it's the best way to put it there. So I can understand the concern of making sure that, you know, you have a council, an organization that is still able to function at full capacity. So I'm not against the, the request. I just want to make sure if supporting that in any capacity, is that opening the door for anything else? Um, because that's the one thing I don't want and I would not support if that was the case because this is not something, this is to be used inappropriately. This is something to make sure that you can do your uh, the job to the best of your ability to make sure that you're um, able to be available, more accountable, and if anything, more accessible uh, to our, our community. So that part I, I don't have an issue with. I just wanted the clarity on making sure that this is not something that's going to open up into a broader sense because I would not be supporting that then at that point. Okay. Councillor Gichuk. Thank you. I have a, a, just a couple questions. It, it says that we will be given business cards. Those were charged to our protocol account, were they not? I just remember last year I had a charge there and I didn't spend anything. So I do believe that they are charged to us. It says they'll be supplied. I, I want to make it real clear that we're given those and uh, they are charged to us for anybody who's making mistakes. Um, <clears throat> I, I look at this and I think that uh, we're, we're trying to be we're, we're trying to micromanage in some of the questions or comments. I think we want generally accepted business uh, uh, ethics to to survive through this. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, policy. And I do believe somewhere, and I can't find it right now, that there is something that says if you want to purchase y your surface or whatever, you can at the depreciated value. Through you, Mr. Chair, I think to the, the uh, she's shaking her head, I don't even have to ask. Yes, yeah. Director. So, so, so it is there. Um, I, I do, I, I, I don't want to preemptively believe one of two things. Either that a counselor is so, uh, is, is so well off that a, a printer would, would not be an extraordinary expense. Uh, I don't know and I don't want to know and I don't want to put my hands in other people's pockets. Uh, if it is an expense, they're not expensive, but the print, printer ink is. And I frequently have members of my community, uh, not to be, uh, they don't have access to a printer. So I have printed off many things, and I have never submitted a bill, but that's my choice, and I don't want to stop anybody else from making a hard copy for people who may not have that equipment in their home. 
So I don't want to either be judgmental, but we do know that people go to the library and people go to Fort and people go to various places to get the access that they need to equipment. So I don't want to be judgmental, but I think that if what we're asking for is a, uh, a bit of, a, of a expansion so that if it was required and it was there and somebody needed to buy it and it was exclusively for their council business, a two-year-old or four-year-old printer at the end of a term should have a minimized value because who wants somebody's used printer? And that's, I think, what I'm, I'm looking for is the difference between ridiculous and uh, appropriate and if you really need it and you want it and you need it and you think you need to charge it through to the township that rather than it be thrown in a scrap pile, that it be continue to be used and you can have it for a diminished value based on the average age. That's what I'm looking for, is common sense in some of this language because I think a hard and fast rule is very hard to some people that sit around this table or may sit about it and I don't want to ask you if you can afford a printer so that you can do something for your constituents. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm looking for in all of this. If it costs a uh, hundred dollars for a telephone, that's fine. I know that I have room. Uh, well, like at home, you can buy that for ten dollars a day. And if people want, by the way, in my last term of council, I spoke to someone when I was sitting in Zagreb. So uh, they were very upset, and we had a long conversation. It cost me ten dollars, but uh, it, but it was worth it. And and I'm just saying. So that value is there between the constituent and the councillor. So. I need us to trust each other and to be respectful of one, of one another and of the people of this township. So I, I have comments that just say, I don't want this to become ridiculous. I don't want to have it there. I just want to know that there's enough language there to give someone the tools to do their job without charging every tissue to the township. And that's what I'm looking for. Perfect. Thank you, Councillor uh, Chichuk. Councillor Rayner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Councillor Riley hit the nail on the head when she, he asked the uh, Director of Finance, and that was the important thing: is that the Director of Finance will judge if it's pro uh, applicable or not, and uh, it's our safeguard. And that made me feel comfortable. And uh, other than that, um, I think uh, really just call the vote. I got some com I got some comments I'd like to make. Would that be a fitting for you, Councillor? Really? <coughs> <laughs> director? Yeah. Is it okay the director speaks too? Go ahead, Director. Uh, through you, <coughs> Chairman Trebetta, I just have <coughs> two comments before uh, you go to vote, just so I have clarification. Uh, what would the effective date be of this amendment? This policy, I think, was effective November 15th, 2022. Um, is it Council's desire to make this effective back to that date? If it is, um, we would have to review expense reports submitted to date, and I just ask for patience if this is passed. Our staff would take some time to adjust anything that has been would January, submitted. Would January 1st be fitting? Or is that Oh, it's, it's not my decision. No, no, I'm but like saying I'm saying, would, would that be fitting, January 1st be fitting if that, with your motion, Councillor Bell? If there is, but we still haven't passed anything, but if that does come, uh, just note that still, if possible. Go ahead, uh, and Director. And just another comment. If the comment regarding computers um, is passed, I just want to alert Council that you may not be able to, you probably will not have IT support that type of asset. We are a Microsoft Office um, um, organization. We have Surface Pros. That's what we support. So just, I want to make that clear. If another kind of computer is purchased, uh, it will not get supported by our IT department. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, I, I do have some comments uh, that I'd like to put on Councillor Bell before, and then I'll come back to you if that's okay, fitting. Uh, th there's two things in this policy that I'd like to see change, and I'll just kind of sum it up. I believe that the capping for the cell phone, and I will, will give you personal experiences, uh, capping of the cell phone. Uh, I, I was out of country last year. I did shut my phone off. 
And when I got back, there were three missed calls from residents. And then when you get back off to holidays, you try to call those residents back and they don't want to talk to you because they're mad that you didn't answer their call. And it wasn't an election year, so it was troublesome for me uh, at that time. You know, I, I'm not... I'm not one. I think everybody should be mindful of themselves, and they're responsible for themselves, and they're responsible to their constituents and how they operate. Uh, I believe there's, if you do go out of, out of country, there are plans, and I think you should do your due diligence. There are plans that are roam from home that you can pay for twelve dollars a day, and you know if you're gone for, for you know seven days, whatever you you know you could charge that $12, and if your cell phone goes over a little bit over the $100 threshold for that month, then, you know, I believe that, you know, some support would be fitting if it wasn't just capped at, at the $100. Um, again, I, 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 I do get a lot, of, a lot of phone calls, and I, I, I do get a lot of more or less actually emails from, from uh, members of the community and you know I, I feel they want an answer directly people do not want to wait anymore for an answer and i believe having that privilege is is a is a, is a uh, i'd say a must to do our jobs as councillors and mayors i, I think that uh, needs to be uh, addressed and I, I don't like to see a cap where you're going to make a decision to shut your phone off and not get someone's phone call I also believe that you know, there are some products that you do purchase that should be, uh, that you need to expense and that I, I don't know if the town would want back. I remember last term, someone, we were doing things virtually and we had a closed session meeting and, you know, my, ch my children were running in the back or somebody walked in the back and someone said that uh, there was people in the back of a, a confidential and, and I got called out uh, as a counselor. So I went out and I bought earbuds to show that there was nothing there. I don't think that's something that the corporation would like back. I, I would be surprised if they wanted to use my, my earbuds back. But, you know, I do think you do need certain products for, the, for your job, um, especially when we're doing virtual. We're still doing, I'm still doing virtual meetings. I'm still doing agenda meetings uh, uh, virtually. So I think there are some, some things that you do purchase that I think, uh, you know, are, should be the, the, your products that you're doing for an effective job. So in, in summing this up, I think two things need to be adjusted is the, the capping of the $100 a month and what you purchase uh, mindfully is, is your responsibility and you have to be representing yourself to your constituents on what you purchase and what should be yourself, what, what should be your own. So, and I don't have a problem telling my constituents that I bought some earbuds to, to run meetings. Um, so that's how uh, I feel about that. But I'll turn it back over to you, Councillor Bell. Everything else, I guess the computer, the computers, uh, I don't know, I, that's only one question actually, Councillor Bell. The computers, I believe this is an IT thing. They'd have to clear this. I don't know if this is what you're asking to purchase after its lifespan. Like, I don't think we need ITs. Like, this is, this is an IT computer, and, and if it's, like Donna said, I, 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 once I'm done my term, I don't have a problem giving this back. And this was told to us when we first got it when we first got it, when I got first got elected eight years ago, right, that at the end of your term, it's, you have to give it back to be cleaned and, and, uh, and, and just, just so you know that, you know, computers in other municipalities do go on that government auction website and, you know, uh, they're usually given back. So I, I don't, I'm, I don't see the need of computers at this point, but I, I maybe I can maybe help me out a little bit what you're asking there, Councillor Bell. So to deal with your computer issue, <clears throat> the only time this gets used for myself is when I'm at council. Correct, yeah. Okay. Other than that, I use my own computer at home, my own printer, my own ink, my own paper. Everything is mine. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever submitted bills for any of that stuff. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying is it should be in here. So if a counselor, whether it be this term or future, if they have a problem, it's there. They can submit the bill and say, here, you know. They get this allotted money for protocol. You're asking about cell phones. You want to pay your cell phone bill with that. That's your prerogative. Yeah. When your money's gone, it's gone. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm saying that that comes out of there, and your protocol is your protocol to spend whatever which way you want. Okay. Okay. So I mean, the computer is an example in there. I don't need one. That's for sure. I mean, I've got three already, so yeah. I don't see me needing one. But it's there because we use them all the time. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's why that's in there. And, you know, the mobile taking the $100 out, supplies, that's all in there. Mm -hmm. you know, whether anybody agrees with it or not, that's their prerogative, and I'm okay with that. But this is what I'd like to see some of the changes made. To what we maybe have maybe we can change that word, including devices and printers. I think that'd be, sure. I think that'd be I mean, more fitting. That's why we're discussing it. It's open. I don't have an issue with changing anything. Yeah. But we need to get it out there and make some changes. Okay. All right. So uh, you still have that? I'll go to Councillor Riley. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm just trying to go through the policy. So I'm, I'm hearing the councillor say at one point to remove the caps within the cap. And to be clear to the community, for anybody who's watching who probably doesn't understand this policy, uh, there is a cap. Like the threshold is the protocol limit, which I believe is about $4,000. Um, so essentially he wants to remove the caps within the caps, which is if there's a restriction, sure. we don't know what the costs are going to be. If you think of future councils and, and, and generations to come, um, this is just to allow that, uh, that room to be able to use it. You can't exceed that limit. It's just not allowing um, or preventing the extra potential, um, I guess, prevention or difficulty of being able to get uh, get that covered. So when I'm going to ask through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Bell, when he mentions that, is he also referring to, and I don't think I see it here, item under Section 11, item K, which also has a cap. That's the Internet portion, which is also broken down as 100. Because I see here a reference says, um, was it mobile phones slash telecommunication services? Is that, am I safe to assume that that is also supposed to be a part of that? Yeah. Okay, I just yes, wanted to. Yes, it is. Because I, I don't see the letter is, here. So I just. the $4,000. All caps should be removed. Okay. okay. We shouldn't have any caps in there. It's up to each and individual counselor <coughs> what they spend their money on. <coughs> okay. As long as it's for council <coughs> business. So, so long as it's for council business, it pertains to what you're doing, then all caps need to be removed. Go ahead, Director. Uh, through you, Chairman Trimbida, thank you. Just to provide some further clarification, um, not 9B, where it talks about office supplies, there's a, um, a bullet that says hardware, software, and related peripherals beyond the corporate's resources. That's where a, pr a printer could be purchased. So I think that point you may be able to not include at all because if a printer went through it would be approved we it includes printing supplies so if you want to put toner through it would be approved um, so perhaps that just adds a little bit more clarification to that point and it, it does uh, because I seen that in there and I wasn't 100 percent sure whether this would be covered or not so knowing that it is yeah we can take that out I don't have an issue with that Okay, Councilor Chichuk. You know, there, I'm sorry, Councilor Rainer, but is there it, something is something wrong with Councilor Rainer? No. no there's oh, more than a lot. Oh, um, there there is. Councilor Bell just made a very good point, because I don't use my um, surface except for council. Correct. I have a computer at home, and it's in fact it's under the desk here, and I use that device except that to get confidential things, I have to use it at home, on the weekend of council, and here. And if we choose, uh, and I'm not suggesting I want to change anything, but it is interesting to think that we're taking resources away from town staff and we're giving them back a used device at the end of a term, which has really not been of the same value to the councillor members. So I'm not saying we should change it, but we should have staff look into it because why am I taking something away from somebody who could have it when all I really need is to use my own? Mm -hmm. It's just something to look at. That's, that's a, an interesting thing. I have a printer. I have print ink and paper. Um, I'm not too worried about that. But I, again, don't want to be looking into the pocket of others. And I think that if it's appropriate, we need to be responsible adults. And uh, so the point about the cap on top of the, the cap of the cap, how we choose to meet with our uh, constituents uh, is something that is going to be different with each one of us. So, but I, I don't think we should go out buying Lamborghini phone systems <coughs> and, uh, and charging them. Well, whereas uh, a Lexus one would work, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we could... Um, we, well, I just want us all to be appropriately
conservative and professional about whatever we decide here. Okay. So what we have here from Councillor Bell is a motion to just remove the caps. I know because there's, a, for me, it's even confusing all these kind of ones, right? So. <coughs> Yep. Okay, we're going to drop the uh, printers, computers, because we're already having color. Uh, that is not a point of note. Yeah. So we don't need uh, number three. Okay. Yep. Oh. Go ahead, Don. Uh, three, Chairman but I just want to clarify, it would not include computers. So the, the way the policy is written now, the printer would be covered because it's considered a device that's added. It would not cover computers. So if you want a computer, you need to add it. Okay? Okay. I mean, personally, I don't see, I don't really see anybody ever getting one, but, you know, in the event it happened, it should have the ability to get it because they do use it for township business. So why should it be limited to bring the bill forward and turn it down and say, no, that's, that's your problem? You know? So I'll keep that one in there. Go ahead, Madam Chair. So through you, Chair Timbretta, to um, Councillor Bell, just uh, the, our director has already noted the fact that if someone gets a computer, the staff aren't going to be any, doing any of the work associated with it. So just to understand, okay, thank you. I mean, we know that now. <clears throat> I don't expect them to fix my computer. I'm using it. All I'm expecting is if it craps out, then I can get another one. Because these little things here, you go blind with them. Sorry. So I think I think what Councillor I think what Councillor yeah. Bell is looking oh, right. for is to remove the caps and uh, purchases that are within the scope of the duties of a councillor and where that and, and looking to you're able to to purchase without having restrictions is that what you're kind of looking for? And but would you know? But can okay? So but then would at least we can. You know, within the scope of that for the, your your four thousand dollar protocol account is it what you're looking within, for. Yes, we have the four thousand protocol. We move the caps, so you're not limited. If you want to buy <clears throat> a five hundred dollar a month phone, then that's up to you. That's coming out of your protocol. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's gone. Okay, you'll pay the difference. You know, and that's all I'm saying. Whatever is in there, we're still going by the rules. We still have everything in there, and now things have been clarified a little more. We do have some things that wasn't. Yeah. I just, to me, it needs to be in there so that. I just wanted to make sure that it's, you know, to just, you know, because we have the public here that it's supplies. It's nothing other than it is. office supplies for, you know, for council. It's nothing. It's for council to do the job. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Sorry, Madam Clerk. I know it's. I think I kind of gave. Yeah, there's that. You just threw a big. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. So I have a resolution that Councillor Bell had given me earlier today, which I have put together. But I'm very confused as to. Uh, there's some things I understand, um, but now I, I'm getting question. I'm questioning myself on some of these very more specific um, additions and whether. That is still what um, Councillor Bell is putting forward. As I had four items, the only thing I have changed now is that section nine, item B, instead of it saying stationary and office supplies, including computers and printers, would just say including printers. And the only and the other change that I have from the original motion was to include um, effective um, effective as of January first, twenty twenty three. That these. Uh, amendments would take place but everything else I have s the same as the amendment that Councillor Bell had given me this afternoon and so I am confused as to whether I'm still going this specific or if I just need to add some type of statement to say as long as the item is in line with their um, uh, with members of council um, doing their duties or something director of finance uh, through you, Chairman Trebetta, after listening to this discussion, I, I think the um, resolution that Councillor Bell brought forward covers everything that was discussed. Section 9 does cover 
printers, but if you want to include it in the resolution, it doesn't cause any trouble. Um, the only thing that needs to be defined is the effective date. Okay. Now, members of committee, January 1st, is that an okay effective date? Members of committee who... Terry? Sure. That's going to be your motion, so is that... She needs a date. Would that be fine? Okay. Did you have a seconder? Did he have a seconder for that? Uh, yes, Councilor okay. Rainer. Okay. So I figure there's no comments or questions. So do you guys, I don't think we need the motion read out again, or do you, would you like it, the motion read out again? Go ahead. Yep. The resolution will read as the following, that the Township of West Lincoln's Council Expense Policy POL T02 2022 be amended as follows, which, will shall, shall which shall take effect January 1st, 2023, that Section 11 mobile phones and telecommunication services, specifically item F and K, be amended by removing any wording relating to reimbursement to a maximum amount i.e. would be reimbursement will be to a maximum of $100 per month. Number two, that section three general requirements, specifically items F and G be amended to add the following sentence to the end of each of these items. This does not apply to any items purchased from the mayor's or councillor's protocol account. Number three, that section nine be amended, specifically item B, by adding the following words, including computers, following the words stationary and office supplies. Number four, that section nine be amended, specifically item C, by removing not in the first sentence. Nine C, which reads home office furniture is an eligible expense. Okay, thank you. Uh, you saw that. Any comments on this? Councillor Rayner? Uh, yes, when the clerk was reading it under three, she said that section nine be amended specifically item B by adding the following words, including computers, mm -hmm. followed by the word stationary and office supply. I thought we eliminated computers and left the word printer in. Printers are covered. Right? Printers well, Already the printers covered. were covered, but the director said you could leave it in or not. It doesn't really matter. Yes. It's fine. No, she was okay with how it was written. She just needed a date, she said. Oh, all right. Then we'll okay. just let it go. Thanks. Okay, so you read the motion, and I just wanted to make it very clear to the public who's listening, this is not an increase in any money. It's just clarity on the definitions. Thank you. Let's go. Okay. Here we go. Bye. Yep, we can open it up for voting. Unless you... Oh, sorry. I just have one quick question. Yep. I know it's going to bother you, sir, but... We ask for staff to tell us if they're going to conferences out of province and out of country. Do we not, through you, Mr. Chair, to the CAO? Um, there is an approval process for going to conferences. So we have, a, we have got in this protocol the liberty to go to conferences that are suitable for members of council to go to. It, there is no requirement for us to ask anyone or go forward with anything when we go out of, if, if someone were to go out of province or out of country. Is that correct? But to you, Chair, um, to um, Councilor Chief Tuck, um, that's where I would read it. I, I just want us to be very grown up when we look at these policies and this four thousand dollars about going to conferences out of the country if we ask our staff to have a second set of eyes look at what is going on to look at the appropriateness i know we're accountable to the public but i do think that a second set of eyes prior to actually engaging in an out of country or out of province event should at least just have someone review I just find that there's a lot of abuse in other municipalities that I'm aware of that uh, take people to far reaches of the country and may not have very much to do with the goal of a counselor. So we're not doing anything to close anything down. 
So if you want all this, just remember what the protocol account is supposed to do. That's yeah. what I'd like to caution us. Me yeah. too. And I, and I think I think if we do are doing that, I'm quite sure one of us would let the CAO know and the clerk that we're we're planning on attending this conference. That's in, in uh, Newfoundland. Newfoundland or such, it's right? I, I but it still falls in within the reams of your existing protocol amount. So, go ahead, Madam CEO. Just as a point of clarification, if somebody were a member of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, that conference moves all across the country. Yep. Yep. So there, there would be an expectation that you would. Council Raider, your microphone. Um, yeah. He's. You don't have your microphone. Think, no, I she do does. She right. does. Yeah. I do. It's just there's feedback when there's some chatter. Go ahead. Sorry, Madam CEO. So I was saying that um, the one conference that I could think about would be the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and that moves around, and uh, that's not out of our control. I understand that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Chief, the floor is still yours if you, you still need. I guess I just want to put everything on the table about what we do need to think about. We're trying to be adult here, and if we want to take off all the caps, Let's just make sure that what we're using this money for is to serve our community and to enlighten the members of council. So oh. that's all. Well, I'm sure if we do that, we, uh, it will be have to be accountable not just to the public, but even the rest of the members of council. If <laughs> that's for sure. So, uh, Council Riley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to figure that last comment out um, you know I'm not aware of any conferences that any of us have taken outside the country I know FCM uh, is one that that rotates around and I'm guessing based on here and I just want to clarify my understanding is that the, we, we use the word caps but the caps are specifically related to a couple items that had restrictions on specific levels of threshold that ne needed to be met within the cap itself the cap itself is four thousand then we had a couple items that kind of limit them. You can only spend up to $100 within that limit. And then, you know, so if you spend $100 a month, you can do $1,200 a year, $4,000 if you don't use anything else. So be it. Um, I guess, you know, maybe to the councillor's comments there, should we be considering something that defines what, a, what conferences should be covered? Like, it's one thing to have it in the scope of council business, but last thing I want to do is find out later on someone used it to go to a conference or a trade show in the states unrelated to council business and how to staff do how to staff report that back to council without being targeted themselves. Do you know what I mean? So I guess through you to our maybe I'll start with our CAO, um, you know, what protections is there? Because you know what's one thing it goes through our director of treasurer or our, our CAO and they find a discrepancy in the policy um, or in the we'll say the the remittance, um, how are they going to deal with that if it is something that they know for sure wasn't council business? Because I think if we need that clarity, then it needs to be in there. Well, I think anything can be related to his council business. You could have a trade convention in Las Vegas that could be council mm. business, right? So, but I, I see your point. Maybe you have to classify it, and the CAO might have to come up with something that it classifies it only to relatable stuff that is done by the municipality, and that's it. Because I don't want to see it to be a, a situation to you again, Mr. Chair, um, where, in not saying this council, but future members of council even, um, where there's a conference but the councillor themselves or councillors are now in a situation where they're being lobbied. You know I mean, I think this has the potential of being something much greater, not in a positive sense, uh, at risk in terms of how this could be abused. So I have some concerns with so the openness. Would, would you like this. to see conferences approved by the CAO and by... But I think we need yeah. to have... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's tough. That's tough to put we, in her position. Yeah, yeah, I think we need I to guess be so, like... You're right, they need that to puts be her in a position, yeah. Like, oh. I think, like, for example, and I'm going to just throw this off the top of my tongue here, but... Yeah, Minis municipally, but I get. But I'm just saying, I get. I get where they're coming from because there could be a certain conference that's relatable to someone's passion that they might use this for. So that's that's where he's. So if we can maybe yeah. specifically make it relatable to Amo, Roma, Good Roads, the conferences that are driven, you know, FCM conferences that are specifically put on by Go within ahead, the country. Go ahead, Madam Mayor. Okay. So further to that, Madam Clerk has. Support another portion of our policy. Oh, it says it already, and then we're but getting ahead of ourselves. Does it? <laughs> okay, sorry. Exactly. Perfect. We do have policies that cover policies, and there is mm -hmm. a sorry. travel and expense policy. Oh, perfect. For those kinds it's of in there? And, um, Could we just have it read? To 
Okay. Does it? Yes. Okay, so it says it in there. Okay. okay. So even though we may Sorry, not have used some of those policies, they are all pretty much in place. We just need to be aware of them. So Go ahead. I just want to make sure that Thank we're not you, like, Edward. it's not turning into a situation where it's like, you know, being used to nickel and dime the community to support other aspirations or ventures. So again, I want to make so sure have it's strictly for council business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The only reason I brought it up was that I wanted it to be clear to the public who might be listening or playing this when they have sleepless nights, that there are sufficient policies in place. And one of the biggest conferences that somebody might want to go to is the planning conference, which moves all over the United States and does vignettes and is a great learning experience. But I would just like to know that we have policies in place and have the public know that there are policies in place so that we're not going to go crazy out there without a process that has us accountable. Okay. And that's what I think tonight has been about was looking like we want to change things, but I do think we're trying to add one level of accountability rather than a number. Councillor Bell? <clears throat> I'm not sure how this went sideways so badly. It, it was a simple request, and I think that, as I recall, if I'm going to a conference, whether it be in London, Windsor, Ottawa, it goes through the clerk, and I say to her, you know, could you register me for such and such a conference? Okay. At that point, we're being governed by the administrative because if we don't qualify for it, they sure as heck aren't going to approve it. So I'm not sure how we got so sideways with okay. this. All right, so Chair. I just want to clarify something once the council. You know, anyway, that's all I want to say. I, I just. <laughs> Go ahead, Council so Ryan, just, just to clarify, and, and so through you to Council Bell, um, that is not a requirement within this policy. In fact, someone could go to a, um, a conference somewhere else that is maybe not recognized by the policy, other than what we're hearing now about the travel policy, and it's a remittance situation. So you submit it after the fact. So the town staff doesn't necessarily, like you can ask the uh, you know, confidential secretary or the clerk to you know fill that paperwork out for you, and that is, not, that is an avenue. But there is an opportunity if someone did want to go and book something for themselves to resubmit after the fact. So just for clarity that that is that does okay. exist I, and, and good good luck to the council because they would normally do that knowing that it wasn't covered so well now good we luck do, to yeah. them getting paid I, yeah. I I think this council will know what conferences they will attend and what they won't attend I understand where your concerns are for future councils to come if this policy but the council of the day will have to deal with that at hand I think we just need to deal with the policy that we have in hand with us at the moment so you you do see the vote uh, your computers open Select the uh, fitting answer you would like for it. And that carries. No, I do. <laughs> you had another chance to do it again anyway, so I wasn't going to miss true. you. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Bradrick. I want to make sure I'm speaking at the uh, at the right uh, committee, but I'm assuming this is an update to, to other committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so, just a, a brief, a quick update on the Heritage Committee. We had our first uh, inaugural meeting for this term. Uh, we talked about potential projects. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Borsma updated us to the changes to the Heritage Act and Bill 23 and how that affects um, some of the work of our committee. And just to acknowledge, you know, the wealth of knowledge of the existing board members and uh, uh, some uh, lots of history within that committee, that's for sure. Um, we've re reached out to uh, the Christian uh, Smithfield Christian High School for a connection. So uh, looking to connect with that history department that uh, possibly will be able to uh, empower and 
and lend some hands to that important work. That's it. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Councilor Shechuk. Uh, just in case <coughs> people have not heard, the Chamber of Commerce is in fact planning a mayor's luncheon and as the liaison representative for that uh, association, <coughs> it's on May 18th from 11 till 1. Uh, there are tickets available and uh, hopefully we'll make it a very successful opportunity to hear our mayor ex uh, expounding on the virtues of this council and uh, what we have planned for the future. So. Tickets are available from the chamber, and it's again, it's May 18th, and it's from 11 till 1. And I can't remember the name of the, of the location, but I will have that for council at the council meeting. Okay. Anybody else? Madam Mayor? Uh, thank you. So uh, I wasn't sure if Councillor Bell was going to say anything regarding age friendly. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, I just want to say that we did have an age-friendly advisory committee um, meeting this past week where we um, so solidified plans. So you will start to see posters out and about. Um, they were done by a couple of residents and then, um, what shall I say, um, made more professional looking by our uh, new person who's looking after um, advertising for us. Um, so we're doing a fraud alert. Um, a fraud awareness seminar, the fraud alert button is on. So these posters will start to be around town. But we really need word of mouth as well to get it out. So um, they have been a great many uh, frauds perpetrated against some local seniors, in fact. We are hearing more and more about the numbers of people who've lost upwards of $30,000 in the grandparent scheme just recently. And so we do have somebody coming on Friday, May 12th at 9.30. We're going to do this at the community center and the upstairs community rooms because we are also hoping to tie in with the seniors social that happens on Friday mornings there. So the hope is that those people who normally come to the social will join us earlier for the fraud awareness session and those who come to fraud awareness might stay for the social time with that group and realize that there is something going on for seniors. So um, just be aware, um, Beth has done a great job as well with a media news release that will go out and, uh, but we really rely on all of you as well, please, to help us get um, information out in the community. And the second thing I just want to give you an update on, and I sort of alluded to that when I said about the Youth Advisory Committee. Um, they are currently working on the corporate Christmas card that will come from the mayor and council, all of you. We will have, um, in 2023, a Christmas card put together by the young people on that committee. So we are pulling all of their ideas together um, with the... Um, and, and they want to continue to meet, by the way, during the summer. They want to get this card and get things done. And so um, that, that is coming forward. So just so that you know, there's a Christmas card coming out that won't be a regular purchase one. It will be something that will represent all of us and our youth. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, I just had one comment. It was uh, Orthodox Easter yesterday. So happy Easter to all the Orthodox people in this community. There is many of them. So I just wanted to say that uh, we say happy Easter for the you know, the one before, but it's a, a big uh, Orthodox Easter that was yesterday. Saying that, uh, no other new business, uh, there's no confidential matters. So we'll turn the microphone over to Councillor Rayner for Public Works, uh, and I'll adjourn the meeting at 9.32.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Township of West Lincoln Public Works Recreation Arena Committee Agenda Meeting Number 3 for Monday, April the 17th. I am your chair, Mike Rayner. Comments from the public for a matter that is on the agenda may be provided in person by attending the meeting and advising the chair during the request to address an item on the agenda section of the agenda. For those individuals that are unable to attend the meeting in person, you may submit comments for matters that are on the agenda by either one emailing jshimmy at westlincoln.ca before 4.30 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Comments submitted will be considered as public information and read into the record or two, by contacting the clerk's department to request a Zoom link to attend the meeting virtually. This meeting will be live streamed. The link to watch the meeting live can be found on the township's website by selecting the township office tab at the top of the website, then clicking the council or standing committee meetings tab and scroll down the meeting list to find the link. This meeting will be recorded and will be available to view by clicking the video link found on the township website within 48 hours after the meeting unless otherwise noted. We have the land acknowledgement statement. The township of West Lincoln, being part of Niagara, is situated on treaty land. This land is steeped in the rich history of the First Nations, such as the Hadawendoronk, the Haudenosaunee, or the Anishinaabe, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. There are many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people from across Turtle Island that live and work in Niagara today. The Township of West Lincoln, as part of the Region Municipality of Niagara, stands with all Indigenous people, past and present, in promoting the wide stewardship of the lands on which we live. Members of Committee, is there any changes in the order of the items on the agenda here tonight? Seeing none, Members of Committee, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest and or conflict of interest? Seeing none, there are no appointments tonight. Request to address items on the agenda. Kevin, are there any members of the public on the Zoom meeting who wish to address a specific item on the agenda as permitted under Section 1013, Paragraph 5 of the Procedural Bylaw? Not seeing any, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Has the Township Clerk received any comments by email from any members of the public? No, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And there is nobody present except uh, Regional Councillor Wittavine. Do you have anything you wish to say tonight, sir? Okay, fine. Consent agenda items. Note all items listed below are considered to be routine and non-controversial and can be approved by one resolution. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member requests it, in which case the item will be removed from the consent resolution and considered immediately following adoption of the remaining consent agenda items. Item PW09-23, consent agenda items. Recommendation that the Public Works Arena Committee hereby approve the following consent agenda items. Number one, information report PW-12-2023, Murgatroyd Trail Reconstruction, Inclusive and Accessible Community Grants Program. And number two, information report REC-03-2023, West Lincoln Community Center, WLCC and the Recreation Services 2022 Review. Items one and two are hereby received for information with the exception of items. Uh, Council Brederick. I'd like to pull number one. Just number one. Are there any members of the committee wish to pull any other ones? Seeing none, so I need a mover and a seconder, please. Mayor Ganand and Council Brederick with regards to number two. Any questions with regards to number two? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Count, pardon me? Oh, on the computer, yeah, I forgot that. I'm sorry. It's much faster my way. We've already had a long night. I'm just trying to speed it up. Is it on? I haven't got one. No, I haven't got one. Mine doesn't come on. Yeah, mark it. Yes, yes, mark it. Yes, please. I don't know why it doesn't come on. Okay, is it done? It's carried. That's carried. Okay, Council uh, Brederick would like number one. I need a seconder for number one, please. <coughs> Council Riley. Okay, Council Frederick, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Very quickly through you, Chair, to the Director. Uh, first, my comment is uh, I want to thank staff for 
um, you know, seeing this opportunity and acting on it so quickly. I think it's a, um, you know, we had this in our 2024 um, projects list and we we're able to maybe jump on some extra provincial dollars. So uh, if you could just briefly um, for the community give a brief description of the work and how this came about. Okay, so through the through councillor uh, through the chair to councillor Bradrick, um, yeah, the Murgatory Trail is basically a 200 meter long asphalt trail between uh, Cambrough Road, Region Road 14, and Ellis Street. Um, it's in poor condition. There's some poor drainage. The asphalt's in poor shape, and uh, there's a se there's sections of the trail that are very steep, and it's really not accessible for um, for the older older adults and. Um, and, and people with disabilities. Um, so we, we retained a, a consultant to start to detail design uh, to, to rehab and reconstruct that trail. And then in March of this year, there was an announcement for some funding opportunity uh, through the Minis Ministry of uh, Seniors and Assess Accessibilities. And uh, the, the grant program is called in Inclusive and Accessible Community Grants Program. So there's an opportunity to secure $60,000 of funding. Uh, so we, we uh, completed the application. We submitted it uh, last week, actually. So we're just waiting to hear back to see, to see if we are successful. And if we are successful, we have to construct the project between August of 2023 and has to be completed by March of 2024. So that's why uh, we presented this report, just to let you know that if we are successful with the funding grant, then we'll present another report. We have to tender the project and, and get going on constructions and we'll present another report that just kind of moves the uh, the project that Councillor Bradrick mentioned that's included in our 2024 uh, forecast into this year. And the report does touch upon uh, when you move a project by a year, there isn't no really, uh, there isn't a, a ta uh, an increase to the tax levy for the current budget year. So there's no impact that way. Um, so that's kind of a summary of how this all came about. Uh, thank you very much. And again, just uh, to point out, thanks to staff for, um, you know, watching for those opportunities and uh, the public and the committee here. It greatly appreciates it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Bradrick. Councilor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess to you back to the director there. So you're saying it needs to start by August of 2023 and be completed by um, I forget what date you mentioned there in 2024 what happens if there's uh, an unforeseen circumstance and it pushes them past that deadline or do we forfeit the grant and is that a contingency we should be factoring when that time comes I, I realize this is just for the application this is not guaranteeing anything's gonna move forward but if we get if we're successful with that I just want to know what the yeah potential uh, cost would sure be. Uh, through through the uh, through the chair of Councilor Riley um, yeah, it has to be built between August of 2023 and March 31st of 2024. Uh, so we have the whole fall season to construct the project. Um, that was one thing that we looked at when we were scoping out which project would uh, best suit this funding opportunity. Uh, we're pretty confident that uh, it only take about a couple months to construct the trail with, and there won't be any unforeseen okay. issues that de delay the project. Uh, however, whenever there is a grant opportunity, we do report, or there is a requirement to report like every few months on how we're making out. So if we do have any issues, we would probably ask for an extension and, and hope for the best that we would grant, grant it. But uh, yeah, we kind of did a little risk management to make sure that we wouldn't fall into that situation, and that's why we selected this project. Okay, and, and one more, if I could do a follow-up. So my understanding is that this grant's paid on basically completion. So it's not like they give you the money, and then later on they're like, oh, you got to give us the money back. You missed it by, you know, two days. Uh, through the chair to Councilor Riley, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure when the transfer of funds come. Um, I, I really don't don't know but oh. we we will get there's like a funding agreement that we have to execute and That's then I, I think the funding comes at the end upon completion and the tender is probably going to go before the deadline starts or the the entry level starts it's correct right? if we if we, so. yeah if we get this if we get if we're successful with the application we would tender it in uh, july or august and start construction okay. september and get it done before the the end of the year okay thank you is that it yep uh, mayor Ganan. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, first of all, congratulations on being shovel ready. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we're looking for and one of the things that we've talked about in the past is that we just need to be watching for all of those grant opportunities. And when we have projects in mind, make sure that things are moved along as far as we can get them so that we're ready to pounce on those opportunities. I would like to say that I moved into the subdivision that benefits from that um, 50 years ago. To my knowledge, it's only been repaired once except for the, the hill that has had spot repairs over the years that fall out year after year after year. And so um, I also see that many more people, as soon as that weather got semi-decent in the last little while, people are walking all the time. And, um, and last year, um, in the fall, and in the spring as well, there were people who had to turn back over and over again and do the entire route out and around because it was flooded over and, and muddy and, and just a terrible mess. So um, it certainly is due to be done, and this is a wonderful opportunity. So I, too, thank you for pursuing that grant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other members of committee? Seeing none. All those in favor? Pardon me? Oh, it comes up again. Damn it. Maybe this time it'll work. This is so slow. Yeah, we did. Yes. Yes. No, you moved it and yeah. Council Riley seconded it. Ah, oh, there it is. No, it's done. It's carried. Okay, thank you. Moving on, communications are no communications. Staff report, item PW 10-23, amendment to budget. Project manager Ray Vachon and director of public works and recreation Mike DePaula. We recommendation report PW-11-2023-2023 Road Rehabilitation Project Tender Award PW-2023-01 Budget Amendment BA-2023-01. Recommendation 1 that, that recommendation report PW-11-2023 Re-2023 Road Rehabilitation Project Tender Award PW-2023-01 Budget Amendment BA 2023-01 dated April 17, 2023 be received. Two, that Council award the tender submissions to Walker Constructions Limited for the road rehabilitation work in the amount of $2,112,150 excluding HST. And three, that a project contingency allowance in the amount of $205,432 be provided for this project. And four, that the budget amendment BA 2023-01 is outlined in Appendix C to reallocate the budget expenditures and financing for the five road projects, including in this tender, along with the extra work on Young Street, South Grimsey Road 10 to Grimsey Road, and Concession 4, Rosedean Road to Hodgkins Road, at an estimated cost of 208000 even, excluding HST, based on the unit prices submitted by the lower bidder be approved, and that five, that all bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter in an agreement with Walker's Construction Limited. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Chichok and Mayor Ganant, uh, before I ask members of committee if they have any questions, would the Director of Public Works please uh, give a brief outline for those people who may be listening as to what this is all about? Sure. Uh, through the chair, uh, as part of the uh, 2023 capital budget, um, you know, funds funds were approved to resurface uh, Concession Four Road from Victoria Road to Rose Dean, um, and uh, Concession Three Road resurfacing Concession Three Road from Silverdale Road, sorry Smithville Road to Keister Center Road, and Young Street resurfacing of Young Street from South Grimsby Road to Grassy Road. Uh, repaving Industrial Park Road from the rail tracks to Spring Creek Road and then 
surface treating uh, an existing gravel road, Vaughn Road, from Wellimport Road to Keister Gainsborough Downline Road. So staff put together a tender once the budget got approved, and uh, we received four bids. Uh, Walker Construction Limited was the lowest bid received. Uh, the the bid that they received, the bids that we received were lower uh, by uh, lower than the approved budget for those uh, road projects. So there was an extra two hundred and eight thousand dollars available to extend some of the work on these roads. So we decided to extend the work on Young Street and Concession Four. Uh, and that's the purpose of this report, basically to award the tender to the low bidder, Walker Construction Limited. And with, uh, based on the unit prices they submitted, we're just going to extend some of the resurfacing work on Young Street and Concession 4. Uh, that's basically it. Thank you. Any members of the committee have any questions for the director at this time? Councilor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the director. So we, we came in under budget uh, around 208000 and I just want to get some kind of guarantee on the record that this is not going to somehow accidentally run over budget, that we've now put an extra project in the works here. So what, like what I'm trying to bring up here, what our overall contingency would have been set to begin with, because to me, the 200000 should this project run into any unforeseen Expenses, you know, we're, you know, we know replacing culverts and and other areas of drainage um, and bridges and stuff like that. I know there's not a whole lot that runs along this strip. I know the Bond Road one has quite a few. There's absolutely no way that's going to go over budget. I guess through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, through yeah, through the chair to Council Riley, uh, we we do have a uh, eight percent contingency on this project, yeah. um, and for a project of this size and this magnitude, um, that's that's pretty typical. 8%, so uh, okay. I have a really good feeling that we will remain under budget, but I can't give you, can't, you any guarantee that anything could happen. Because my thought is, you know, I, I get it, we're, we're just trying to maximize what you have available there, but my thought is if we have an extra $208,000, which is quite a bit of money, why not put that back? I know that money doesn't go straight back into the base, but why are we trying to overstretch here? If we manage to come in under, why not save the taxpayers a little bit of burden here? So that would be my, my comments for the record. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My comment would be that exactly the opposite. I think it's great that we've come in under budget and are able to get a little bit more work done. And so as long as there's a, a contingency, and I did check very carefully as I went through that and saw that there's an almost an equal amount, $205,400 actually, that are set aside in case of those unforeseen kinds of things that could come along. So I feel really pleased to see that we're able to do a bit more road. So thank you. Council Bradwick. Uh, thank you. I agree with uh, Mayor Ganan. Um, from my understanding, this is work that would be done in the near future and was part of um, up-and-coming uh, capital projects. I just wanted to, through you, Chair, to the Director, just to clarify for uh, some um, uh, community residents that live on Vaughn Road that have been, advocate, uh, been uh, advocates of extending that project uh, more east, um, that you did look at that project and, and had um, deemed it to be too expensive at this time. That's on or not. Yeah, through the chair to uh, Councillor Bradrick, yeah, through the budget preparation process, we looked at combining uh, Vaughn Road into one project. Uh, just due to budget constraints, we split it up over two years. Um, when we tendered this, uh, before we decided to extend Young Street and Concession 4 based on the unit prices submitted, the first thing we looked at was if we could finish all of Vaughn with the unit prices we submitted, and there wasn't room in the budget to do that. So we picked Young Street and Concession 4. Um, and the other section of Vaughn Road that you're referring to, um, it, it's slated to proceed in our 2024 budget. So, um, yeah, those are the comments that I can make on that. Great. Thank you. That's I just want that clarity. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Riley. Uh, thank you for the second time, Mr. Chair. So, again, I just want to bring back, so the, the 208000 that we were talking about, the, the extra uh, leftover, um, it, it's actually greater than that because the contingency is 205000 So we're essentially talking about $413,000 that could have 
been saved off the backs of taxpayers this year considering all the stuff work that we're doing and I, and I get the the proactiveness and trying to be efficient here but I think we you know we've definitely um, overachieving in a lot of areas and I, I pers personally would have liked to seen some self-restraint in some other areas here so again I just want to highlight it's not just two hundred eight thousand dollars it's potentially four hundred thirteen thousand dollars four hundred thirty two cents that could be saved so I'm just adding the contingency with the, I'm, from my perspective, not necessarily needed to deal with this term, or not this term, sorry, this year. So that's all I'm going to say there. But um, As chair to Councillor Riley, how did you convert 208000 to 413000 Well, sorry, I, no, I said 413000 you said 413. 413. But 13. the savings was 208 if you didn't. 208, but then there's already nine. This is approximately here, at least on my sheet, unless my information is incorrect here that staff has provided us. It says a project contingency of 9%, which is $205,430.32. And then if we have the extra work, you have 208000 it actually has 208000 even here, coming to a total cost of $2.5 million and seven, well, $2.570,000. Um, through to the director, can you clarify that, please? Uh, sure. Yeah, through the chair to Councillor Riley, um, we would still need a contingency for the other oh, I, work. Yes. So uh, I'm not disputing the contingency. Just so to that, be clear, I'm talking about the actuality of if the contingency is not needed, we have that there is a. No, the contingency net. would still be needed for the original work. So if we're doing two hundred and eight thousand of extra work. You know, we're, we would we would only apply an eight percent contingency and, to that amount. And I get that part. Yeah. That's part okay. of the whole packet. What I'm saying is, let's say they run on budget or under budget, then the contingency may not be utilized, which is where I'm coming up with the whole figure here. So that I'm not talking about. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think we should just be depending on contingencies because if we know it's going to cost that much, we might as well be budgeting that much, not just the budgeting that, or that the contingency would be beyond that much. Right now, the contingency is the safety net, the two hundred five thousand that was already factored. The two hundred eight thousand is the extra sh shortfall as a result of the bidders coming under what we had originally budgeted. What I'm saying is, if we don't need to use the contingency and we didn't bother with the work and we ran on budget, then it would have been four hundred thirteen thousand dollars. Taxpayers would have had to burden, be burdened with this year. Back to the director. Yeah, through the chair, uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, eliminating the contingency if no, we weren't doing no. the extra work. So, and, it, and to be clear again, I'm not saying that we omit <laughs> the contingency. I don't know why there's a misunderstanding here, and maybe it's not. I'm not explaining it very clearly. So I'll try again. I am talking about the hypothetical situation where we don't require the contingency. I'm not talking about taking the contingency out. I'm talking about the extra work, which is an extra two hundred eight thousand dollars off the backs of taxpayers. That is what could have been saved. The contingencies in, in in secondary to that. So now I'm saying in a hypothetical situation should they run on budget and a contingency is not required and had we not done the extra work there would have been a four hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and thirty two cents saving in an ideal situation that's all I'm saying that's all I'm trying to get the community to understand of what could have been saved but it's up to the will of this committee I'm just saying again that is kind of the breakdown there it wouldn't have been a 2.5 million dollar it could have been around 2.1 if everything goes as planned and we didn't do the un at least my opinion the the unnecessary extra work at this time, but that's just my opinion. You almost said that in one breath. Almost. <laughs> Councillor Chichuk. <clears throat> and if it hadn't rained today, we would have had farmers out on their fields. I, I want to put on the record that I think that we have followed the appropriate procedures to do a budget, set a tax rate, and in fact, do the tendering and expect to have the work done. It is not unusual for work to come in both under and over budget. I would never want to talk about a contingency because if you've ever watched a house renovation project on the television, they always find a way to have a problem. And when Mr. DePaula is out there with his staff, he may use the contingency, he may not. And that is normally goes back into a pot, which at the end of the year, the treasurer puts into the appropriate reserve or wherever the monies were gathered from. But if we are going to be full and fair to our con con constituents out there, then I guess we should probably take every cent that is always put into our capital budget and reduce the taxes by that. Because that's what we've just talked about. We, we budgeted based on an acceptable engineering ex estimate. And if we're not going to use it and we're going to follow this kind of logic, then we should, in fact, immediately be issuing checks to everybody in West Lincoln. We don't do that. We put it into a reserve. We put it into the year, the following years. 
And yeah, you're right. We, we raised taxes by 1% too much this year, but it didn't really raise taxes too much because it came from reserves and from other sources. And so the actual impact to the tax deal, taxpayer was not 1%. It was substantially less because it came out of reserves, and that's where it will go if we don't spend it. So I know we're talking, but this hyperbole is going to drive everybody to drink, um, which I have a comment on as we go to that. I, I already have. Good. Thank you. But uh, I really do think that we need to, uh, we need to con congratulate our staff for a job well done in the tendering and the fact that the cost came in and that the monies that won't be spent will go to the reserves as they were drawn from and allow us to do work in the future. And this year, we'll get a little bit more done than we originally thought we would. Uh, and that's the end of what I've got to say, and my opinion only. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Trombetta. Uh, sorry, I had to take an important phone call on the outside. So I guess we're on recommendation. Uh, 1023 and you only have two items I know you did the first is that correct uh, chair you're on, you're on uh, nine we're on nine 1023 we're, we're on nine yes which is nine, which is 1023 we're still correct? on the road rehabilitation so I, I'm seeing that uh, through you mr. chair to mr. director that uh, is this is the same contractor that had the previous contract for the resurfacing of uh, many of our roads and our wards is that correct uh, through his chair, Councillor Trombetta, yeah, Walker Walker Construction uh, was awarded last year as tender. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Director, now, uh, as a rural councillor and seeing these roads, I have received a few phone calls, and I've, I've, I've forwarded them on to your department about the uh, uh, problematic workmanship on, on some of the, the roads that were, were done. What reassurances the contractor made to... Uh, to, uh, well, to the, the municipality on how he's going to rectify some of the issues that are on not only my my roads, but obviously Ward 2 roads that have been a bit of a problematic situation. So, Through the Chair to Councillor Trombetta, yeah, we're, we are aware of uh, some defic deficiencies on uh, some, of the, some of the work that was completed. Uh, we're aware of them. The contractor is aware of them. We've met with them. Uh, the, after a substantial completion or total completion of the contract, we have a one-year maintenance period, and we have some holdback monies, which which uh, is part of the contract language. And uh, we are working with uh, the contractor to fix these deficiencies. Um, uh, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think the contractor is going to uh, correct the deficiencies and. Uh, for their reputation and, and, and move on. If they don't, we have hold back monies and that we could use to fix it and and move on. Um, some of the you know poor workmanship, it, it's kind of some some of it's out of their control. Like for example, when they were laying some of the product, they got hit in a heavy rainstorm. So then after a few months, you'll see some loss of gravel and stuff like that. But I'm not you know that's just one example of many things that can happen. But yeah, we're, we're aware of the deficiencies. We have holdback monies. The contractor is aware of them. And we're just, uh, you know, working with them, negotiating with them to find the appropriate uh, treatment to fix those deficiencies and the appropriate time to do so. Okay. And we have holdback monies to uh, make sure it gets done. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Riley. Yeah, this will be the last time I'll speak to this. So through you, Mr. Chair, to our director, um, with, the, with the extra work, how, do you know off the top of your head how many homes are on that strip? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Riley, I'm sorry, I don't know how many homes are on the strip. Do you think it's more strip. than a dozen, two dozen? Uh, I really don't. I really don't. Okay. We, I, at this time, I don't. Horseshoe, to understand how I, many homes are on that strip? <laughs> it's concession four. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many homes are on the strip. I'm just trying to. No, I get to that, but there's, I'm yeah. going somewhere with this. So I, I hear Councillor Chichek when she talks about you know being fair to our constituents. And, and I really want to highlight the fact that, you know, we're very quickly here going to spend $208,000 when we have about 3,200 homes approximately and more than three that also have to carry a double tax known as the urban service area fee. And that is in the ballpark of $177,000 that we're so quickly going to dismiss 3,200 homes that could be saved that 
to deal with what I'm going to guess is less than three dozen, if not less, homes on that strip there. So I don't want to hear about being fair when 3,200 tax or 3,200 homes in this ward is being double taxed unfairly, and we're worried about a few dozen homes in another ward. So I just want to make that very clear. Um, Councilor Chuchuk, I I'm going to have to uh, speak to this point. Urban services are the services that are delivered to the home: water, sewer and various other elements, street lights, etc. They are taxed in a different way than rural services that get none of those and get get uh, waste, waste uh, collection as do the rest of the community. I don't want to de deliberate this much further, but you can't take money that was raised and put into a reserve for capital works throughout this community, regardless of how many houses are on the road, or we'd never fix a road anywhere, but God forbid someone goes down and gets hurt on it. I, I cannot allow uh, myself to hear that we have double taxed the people of the urban area. That is a misconstruction of information that cannot left, be left the way it is. We tax according to assessment based on the services that are rendered and the urban services are delivered to the urban area and those that receive them pay for them in one way or another. It is not a double taxation and this council, this committee cannot go forward allowing the public to think that they've been double taxed. They have not. And the rural areas are taxed differently as are agricultural fields versus the property that your house sits on. So if we want to go through the entirety of how we tax and how rates are established, I'd be happy to do that at some point with all of us at the table. But goodness gracious, we are not double taxing anyone in this community. We are taxing based on assessment and on services provided. Thank you. Councillor Riley for last time. Yes. Um, just to add clarity, there is a double tax um, because the residents of Ward 3 are not only required to pay the urban service area tax, but are also required to pay wards one and two fees that go into it. So if, you know, in one of the FOIs I got that date back to 1970 talked about the creation of the urban service area fee and that it was to address any areas with sidewalks and street lights was going to see a special levy. And that once the rural areas start to see their own sidewalks and street lights, that that tax would essentially be put away. However, that was never done. That was never done. And so by that definition alone, not only do the residents of Ward 3 have to pay this separate levy, on top of it, they also have to cover, which only Wards 1 and 2 have to pay into the portion that deals with their part, Ward 3 also have to pay for that too. So that is where the double tax is. That is where the injustice is. So again, you can, you can sell it however you want. It is a double tax. At the end of the day, on your tax sheet, you're not seeing a separate charge for that and then also having to pay for what's going on in the other two wards related to the very same service. And our director last term of uh, our treasurer had actually broke down the fact that it'd be very difficult to separate the tax because it was specifically broken down to how it's, I guess, um, laid out in terms of being able to calculate it separately. And that we would have to create probably some kind of debenture to allow it to kind of be absorbed into one. But that council, voted against a recommendation to bring that forward because they did not want to take money out of their wards, but they're okay double dipping into mine. That's where my problem is. Okay. Uh, any further, Council Bill? Uh, <clears throat> through you to uh, Director DePaul. So how, if it's 208,000, where we're doing the road, we have a savings of $208,000 that we weren't going to use how can we arbitrarily put that money towards another road that we haven't had any bids on? Right? Shouldn't that money just go back in and the reserve and then go to the next road that's on there? Like you said, we take that money and extend it into this road project here. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, through yeah through the chair to Councillor Bell. Um, yeah, there is language in the contract where we could, uh, you know, extend their unit prices to do more work if we receive good u unit prices, just like the other way around. If we receive high unit prices and we're over budget, we're able to negotiate with the with the low bidder on changing the, the limits of a project. Uh, so, yeah, there's contract language in there that allows us to do that. 
Um, and once again, why, you know, why did we select these roads? Uh, well, we reviewed the uh, condition of the roads, right? Um, because they're at the appropriate pavement condition that we should, this is the best time to resurface it to get the best bang for your buck. And we also, uh, in order to, to save on mobilization charge, we're just extending the limits of an existing road that they're doing, as opposed to picking another road in the other area of town and then charging the contractor will be asking for a, a mo you know a mobilization and demobilization charge to go to somewhere else in the municipality. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, we do. On projects like this, there is language in the uh, contract document that gives us the ability, once we receive the unit prices, to renegotiate uh, the scope of work depending on what the prices come in at. Hope well, that answers your question. No, not really, because you arbitrarily upon your department decided to spend that extra money on more roads that we've already spent arguments sake like the equivalent money to do and this was money that was left over I'm not sure how you can just arbitrarily say okay let's extend these roads and do more when that should have went back in to the pot and gone out for tender to do other roads in the in the community, I mean that's the way I'm looking at it. Director, you got a comment? Uh, sure, yeah, through the chair to Councillor Bell. Uh, once again, I don't think we arbitrarily picked the roads. Um, you know, we're going off the condition of the roads. When's the best time to to resurface the roads? Um, if you feel that we're arbitrarily picking them, so be it. Um, if we don't do the roads now when they're at a condition where you get the best bang for your buck to resurface them and we want to put the money back into reserve and do it another year, it's going to cost you more money to do them in another year. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, again, mobilization charge. Who knows what prices will be like next year. So, yeah, maybe we did arbitrarily pick these roads, but it's not arbitrarily picked. They're, we received unit prices. We looked at the condition of it. When do we get the best bang for a buck? And we've held these are the roads that are, 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 the, are the right ones to extend the limits on to get the best bang for a buck. Understood, but the point is, there's $208,000 that was left from the project. The roads that you selected to spend that money on, they're not even on the next ones up to be done. So I'm not sure why we're extending them. If they weren't, you know, like, did you, we're, sorry, we're not we're not paving. Good. Clarify that when this happened last time around, and we got the extra piece of concession five done, we were all very pleased, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it was a similar circumstance. There was to be a section of concession five done, and then a part left, and then another section had already been done, and and it it was became a matter of good economics to have that project extended and the other piece of road done. This is a similar situation. We were able with the same company, with the same equipment, with everything there to extend and get a bit more road done. And I think that we've belabored this long enough. I think that it's time to just make a decision. Thank you. Can I make a comment though? Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm about three times faster than you are. Uh, there's two ways to look at this. I understand where the director's coming from. If there's an opportunity to do more road because we happen to have extra money to do that, this would be an opportune time because the equipment's there, they'll give us a better price and we'll be ahead of the game. So that's the one side. The other side is if council want to look like heroes, they can take the 208,000, divide it by the 80,000 equivalent to 1%, which works out to 2.6, take 2.6 off the amount that we agreed last month will be the budget for this year, and we've beat everybody in the region of Niagara almost. So there's two ways of looking at it, but it'll come back to me to bite you if you don't do it now, because if you don't do it now, that road's going to be worse next year, and it may cost even more to fix it. So it's almost damned if you do, damned if you don't, and the decision from the director is that the job is to get these roads up to snuff. These roads need to be done. We happen to have extra money. We got lucky. So let's get the job done and move forward, and as the mayor said, we did that with concession five, so why are we changing the tune now? So if there's any further questions, I'd like to put it to the vote.
clarity, giving it back to the tax, wouldn't it just go to a reserve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't think it goes back to the tax. So I just want to be clear on your statement there. Yeah. In, one, in one way, you, you make sense, but it's not going to go back. It's going to go into a reserve. It right? would go into a reserve, yeah. All right. Okay. Are we doing the vote now, please? Okay, moving on to other business, members of council, other business items of an informative nature. Anybody across the horseshoe has anything? Seeing none, new business, the only items that require immediate attention or direction must first approve a motion to do some new item of business. Is there any need for that at this time? No. No? Confidential matters, there is none tonight, and this meeting now adjourns at 10.18 p.m. <laughs>